Welcome to the Village of Buchanan Board of Trustees regular meeting of September 7th, 2021. This meeting is being conducted in accordance with chapter 417 of the laws of 2021. And I would ask everyone, let me put this up. We finally have a flag. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of, America of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Let me remove my flag now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first, let's go to the approval of minutes, the May 25th, 2021 uh, workshop meeting. Um, I do have one correction. Right on the first line, Mayor Knickerbocker stated that at the community and it's unity, not union meeting. Okay, anyone else have anything? I have nothing. Okay. Uh, yes, one thing on page three. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, there's the first paragraph that takes up half the page. And near the bottom of that, um, yeah. Trustee Murray responded, I am an employee of the village and hopefully at the next planning board meeting, you will have the same public discussion because you did appoint a planning board member who is also an employee of the village, I'm thinking that that was meant to be employee of Poltec. Sean, can you confirm that? No recall. Okay, we were talking about people that work for Holtec. No, you have to go to the video. With the village, and I believe that that was meant to point out that there is another, a planning board member who is also an employee of Holtec. All right, perhaps so, uh, then we can go back. I don't, do we have a record to go back? Right, I'll check the uh, video and, and fix okay, it or leave you. it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then let's table that for now then until that's resolved. Um, July 13th, um, board meeting. Any questions, corrections, comments? Nothing. Are we good? Um, let's see. On the le okay. Yes, one thing on the last page, 28. Mm -hmm. Um, in the third sentence down, Trustee Zachary was at the LWPR. I know it's silly, but it's supposed to be LWRP. Okay. Okay, we'll fix it. Anything else? Nope. nope. On a motion to move. approve the meeting, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, we're moving along to the July 20th meeting. Corrections, comments, questions? I have nothing. Nothing. No. Right. On a motion to approve the minutes of July 20th. So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, July 27th. I have nothing. Nothing. Okay. On a motion to approve the minutes of July 27th workshop meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. August 3rd board meeting. Questions, comments, I have, corrections? I have one on page two. Okay. Down in the bottom on resolution uh, repealing the law, the last sentence, it should be trustee function and trustee Zachary are opposed, not trustee Murray. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. On a motion. A move. A move. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. August uh, 23rd workshop meeting. Same questions, comments, corrections. Nothing. Nothing? Okay. On a motion to approve the workshop meeting of August 23rd. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Same. Aye. I wasn't Aye. there. Same. Oh, you Same. abstain on that? Okay, Nick. All right. Cindy, abstain for Nick. 
Got it. Thank you, Nick. Okay, so moving on to comments from the floor, agenda items only. Marcus, am I the only one seeing this meeting is being recorded? No, no, everybody should see it. And also hopefully you can see the attendees. Um, right now I'm looking to see if, um, okay. if anybody has to say, wants to say anything, please raise your hand. Okay. And um, so far I see no hands raised. I see that there are some, uh, some new names in this list. Does everybody, uh, can we just get briefly, if you're on Zoom, can you tell people how to raise their hands? Sure, on the bottom of the screen, as you use your mouse on the bottom, it'll say raise hand, just click on it and your hands will be raised. And then the mayor will address you. Okay, and if okay. I, I think now I have an iPad. So if you're on an iPad, you click where it says more, the upper right corner where it says more and you get a menu where it says raise hand. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I have a, I have a PC. Yeah. And please, if I if I overlook that, please uh, have someone please mention it to me if I overlook the hand being raised. Thank you. Oh, that was a nice, sorry, a nice quiet motorcycle. Okay, um, and I do, sorry. <laughs> Normally you could hear a pin drop on Henry Street, but not tonight. Um, so I, I do, uh, I would like to add something onto the agenda under letter T. Um, we have all of the backup and studies done for the Siemens work performed to date. So I would like to add um, that onto letter T to uh, discuss the payment of that. Okay, um, so under new business, since nobody has comments from the floor, A is to consider a motion to open public hearing to amend chapter 21, 211-21 entitled Yard Screening to the Code of the Village of Buchanan. So can I have a motion to open that public hearing? I'll move. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. This, this, you know, this is something we've discussed. Uh, we thought it was on the books where the good side of the fence is facing to the neighbor when, in fact, we didn't have that. Um, it was called the good neighbor uh, law. So, but there's something I do want to point out in our fence law, and it's under C. It says, um, just so people understand, you know, when they put up a fence. A drawing of the proposed fence must be submitted to the building department showing the exact location the fence will be located on the property and a building permit must be obtained. Fences are to be limited to four feet in height across the front yard and six feet in height on side and rear yards. Fences um, to be located anywhere on the property, but this is something we had changed, I think a couple years ago. The village requires front yard fences to be set back six feet from the curb to allow for snow removal. The village will not be responsible for damage to fences caused by snow plowing and snow removal. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I don't know if everybody's aware of that. But the biggest change in this is, um, is number H. And it says all fences featuring a rough or unfinished side shall be constructed such that the rough or unfinished side of the fence faces the interior of the property on which, on which the fence is situated. Um, and then also all fences installed before the adoption of this section shall be exempt from the requirements. So basically this is, this is just like I said, um, you to your neighbor, you have to face the good side. Um, if you have a vinyl fence, both sides are good. So this mostly pertains to the, the wooden fences. Any and, and on the on the wooden fences, um, what do we mean? Do, it just says featuring a rough or unfinished side. So like um, a lot of fences are pretty much the same on you know similar on both sides except that the posts are on one side. So I think I think the unfinished side is a little. Is a little vague. Is it should be the side that the posts are on, maybe. I mean, you know, a lot of fences are just slats, and the only thing that distinguishes them is that the support pieces are on one side, not the other. Right. That would be the so, back side. So that would be the side that would face the, okay. the property owner. I mean, I I kind of understand what this is meant to say, but I think that you have to be quite literal and clear when you write code. 
So maybe, maybe we need to also to, to word that as um, the rough or unfinished side, including the structural components. I mean, I, anybody have any other thoughts on the wording there? I think it's kind of clear, Nick. I mean, rough side, okay. you know, people are going to say, which is easy, and you know, rough doesn't sound good, whereas the other side is the good yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, I, I okay. I, I just feel a little like, a little bit like this is over legislating, because I don't know that we've had a lot of problems with this. Um, I have a situation in my backyard, I'm facing the library, the library has a continuous arborvitae hedge, and if I was to put up a fence, I don't think they would care which side was facing them. You know, so I think there are different circumstances depending on the type of fencing. Um, I'm not bowled over by this legislation, but I see the purpose of it. We, we've had what, one situation where this is a problem? We had a lot of situations or just this one? I, that I think up? over the years, there's been different situations. Okay. How many? Well, <laughs> if I had to go back since the village was in Corporate at 19, what was it, 28? I don't have that information, just a second. <laughs> How about the last five years? The last five years, I would have to look at, I'd have to speak to the building inspector that's there now. And unfortunately, our previous building inspector isn't there. But I think most people were aware that, you know, um, that's what you should do. I, I always assumed that it was in our village code. So, you know, we're just, uh, straightening that out with this um, with this code with this uh, change is there anyone um is there anyone else on the board that would like to comment on this yeah i would okay regardless of how many issues we've had i think it's the right thing to do to put this in there because it's it's important and any exposure to uh any posts or interior uh, offense should be should be hidden should be hidden. I mean, it's just a, uh, it doesn't matter how many times we've had this problem. It's, it's just the right thing to do. And it should, it should be uh, in, in law. It should be part of our, our law. Mm -hmm. Just feel like any, 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 uh, any neighbor should, should feel the same way. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Okay. Anybody, since the public hearing is open, is there anybody that's with us this evening that would like to comment on that? Please raise your hand. Uh, Mayor, I do not see anybody raising their hand. Okay. And I know, you know, and I know, like I said, if you have the uh, the vinyl fences, it's kind of it's kind of a mood issue. Yeah, but anything that has exposed any exposed, uh, you know, structural parts, components, pressure, tr or, pressure treated posts. Yeah, like any that. posts that are exposed should be, you know, you should be facing. Most fences now are are, are pretty much uh, vinyl and. Mm -hmm. everything's concealed anyway so but we still do make yeah. wood fences with yeah. the uh, post exposed mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> i, I okay. understand where um, you're coming from with that i think i think i could go with, would go with this it's not it's not a a, a horrible piece of legislation i could see that if, if, if anything it could help it can't there's nothing that it could hurt so i i guess i'll go along with this can i clarify then are we sure, going to please is this going to read um, shall be constructed such that the rough or unfinished side, including the structural components such as fence posts, shall be constructed. So is that what you want, the language, including the structural components? Yes. Okay, added. Thanks. Okay. That would be for the wooden fence. I hate, I hate to prolong this, but the vinyl fence, the, the, the post shows on that. Yeah, I mean, I just put in a, uh, 20 feet of what they call a good neighbor fence which mm -hmm. has alternating slats on both sides and the post is down the middle. It shows, it, so what you see on both sides is exactly the same. Correct, correct. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so uh, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing on to amend chapter 21121. I'll move. Okay. And, uh, second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm just going to read the resolution. Whereas the motion ha was approved by the Board of Trustees, the Village of Buchanan, for a public hearing to be held by said Village Board at the Municipal Building 236 Tate Avenue, Buchanan, to hear all interested parties on a proposed local law to amend Chapter 21121, Yard Screening to the Code of Village of Buchanan, 
And whereas notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in the official local newspaper, and whereas said public hearing was duly held at a regularly scheduled meeting of the Village of Ward on September 7, 2021 at 730, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf or in opposition to said proposed local law or any part thereof. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees, the Village of Buchanan, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the Village of Buchanan to adopt said local law. Now be it therefore resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan hereby adopts said local law number 8, 2021, amending chapter 21121, entitled Yard Screening to the Code of the Village of Buchanan. Be it further resolved that the Village Clerk be and hereby is directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting and in the local law book of the Village of Buchanan and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the Secretary of State of the State of New York. On a motion to uh, approve, uh, to adopt this local law. I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, thank you. Can I uh, add one thing? Sure. Uh, to that oh, we already just, voted on it, Nick. We it has voted. nothing to do with the vote. Just pointing out for residents that um, <laughs> the fencing code also includes a contingency that if you are replacing or repairing more than 50% of your fence, even if you have a, a fence that uh, predates the code and is allowed uh, grandfathered in, so to speak, um, if you repair or replace more than 50%, then you have to conform to the new code. That's, I right. just wanted to make that clear to people. All right. Thanks for adding that, Nick. Okay, the next is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Westchester County for the Stop DWI Patrol Project. Um, this is an agreement that we do, we've been doing it for quite a while. Um, the village would uh, receive $8,400 per year, and the chief would, um, would you know, set up, you know, and, and work with other um, police departments, you know, whatever he feels like, you know, is important or where it should be for the a DWI program. And um, this is a five-year agreement. It commences, it commenced it in January of this year and ends on December 31st, 2025. But I'm sure if he, you know, sets up a few, um, few of those DWI, stop DWI things, I'm sure the 8,000 will go pretty fast. And um, so the board has received the agreement. Um, so with the board, is there any questions on this? This is something, you know, like I said, we, we've done before. Are we good? Okay, so I'm gonna make a motion to allow the mayor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Westchester County for the stop DWI patrol project and at an amount not to exceed $8,400 per year. And the agreement commences January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2025. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next is something we've been discussing for a while. Um, we've been talking about um, putting a kayak launch over at Lens Cove. Uh, we've spoken to our engineer, George Palmer, and for him to prepare to submit the required documentation to the DEC, it's in the amount of $3,500. So um, for the scope of work to install it, and then plus there's another fee to, of course, install the kayak launch. So um would the board like to discuss this or would you like me to just put this up for a vote because we kind of discussed it and discussed it i've discussed it um and um the invoice the price for the kayak dock which would be a, a paddle sport dock kayak canoe um uh, anything non-motorized basically uh it's a two boat launch one which would at least one would have um railings that would enable people with any limited mobility that but that once they but that can kayak or canoe once they're in the boat people that need a little assistance the railings would help people get in and out basically look like two stair rails on either side of the launch pad so that would be a a, a, a positive thing to have um this would also mean that we can get the current boat dock which is no longer used and has some exposed rebar and broken up areas we can get that 
uh, some of those dangerous uh, situations removed. Um, and um, I think that the, the paddle sports have gotten much more popular over the last 10 or 20 years, really. But um, they're very popular now. You you go driving down a village street, and you know you look up a driveway and you see you see a kayak sitting up on the side. I mean, it's not an uncommon thing for people to have these days. Um, so I think it'll be a nice addition to the park, a uh, park that's getting more use now than it has, I think, ever before. Largely because of the, the riverfront walkway that terminates there. A lot of people are seeing that park. I just think it was. It would spruce up the park, make it a little bit more, give it a little more vitality and interest. Um, so, but we have discussed it a few times and I certainly am in favor of uh, moving ahead with this. Okay. I don't think we had, a, there was a lot of uh, enthusiasm for the plan, Nick. I know you're, you, you'd like the idea and everything. It, it would be an addition, but in light of the recent decision that we've had of some pending litigation where our insurance company is not going to be covering us for uh, us being sued by somebody that we'll be discussing later on. I don't think we should be taking on any more spending until we get a handle on how much the new lawyers are going to cost us to represent us in this lawsuit. It, well, okay. The spending on this is not coming from general, from the general tax fund. It would come from, um, uh, there are some specific, grant monies and the recreation fund that are set aside specifically for this purpose. We've talked for years. People have said that they think we should use it. And now we finally have a way to use it. This would not come out of any tax revenue. Uh, the money would come out of the rec fund or out of some grant money. What grant money um, do we have to spend on this? Pardon? What would be the what total? What grant money are you talking about? Do we get grant money that we can we can spend on us right now? I have a hundred thousand dollars that I've gotten from Entergy. Um, a lot, a large chunk of that will be for um, the renovation of the circle. Um, so we do have money that we can spend from that grant money there. Um, also, and I'll, I'll discuss later what the other, the rest of the hundred thousand dollars will go towards. But we could could take it out of that hundred thousand also. Yeah, so it doesn't impact any tax revenue. Uh, the litigation issue is something that goes back, if, you're, if what I'm thinking you're talking about is going back 30 years. I mean, it's kind of- Yeah, well, we just, re we just received a letter stating that our insurance company is not gonna cover us. So we, we're, we're gonna have to take any defense out of our general right. fund. And, but this, would, this is not coming out of general fund. Going. It would not impact uh, taxation or general fund in any way. But, if, if everybody's not on board with the final product of actually installing this, I don't know if we should do the, spend the money to do the research. Well, the, it's already been reviewed with the engineer and the highway department who will be able to do the work putting it in. Um, and um, uh, most of the money would, it would be the, uh, all the kayak dock components and then the engineer's fees, the kayak dock components were um, from the invoice I have from several months ago, I, I hopefully still holds 12 and a half thousand, the three and a half thousand at the, of the engineer's fees. And I don't know that, that we have a clear idea from the highway department. I think they needed to rent a backhoe one day to pull out some of the old concrete. Uh, the, and there'd be some, there'd be some work being done by the highway department. I think the cost for, on that end would be fairly minimal. Uh, I don't know, I don't exactly have a number, but Marcus, do you have any insight on that? Uh, no, we want to know the number for that, but if the board wanted to use the recreation money that the way the mayor stated, if the board wanted to go that in that direction, that I would suggest that if they uh, approved the 3500 that the, that the money then be appropriated out of the recreation fund, because the only way you can take the money out of there, the board has to approve right. that. So I um, right. just want to throw that out there is that we have to come back again to another meeting okay. to discuss it again. But, but I think it's safe to say we would come from there or it would come from that the, the grant money that Teresa was talking about and not from the general taxation fund, part of the beauty of it. And Marcus, we're, if we do do this and if we do install this after we purchase it, all of the manpower costs will also come out of that recreation fund or grant money? Uh, no, the manpower, the operations would definitely have to come out of the general fund money. That's correct, Sean. And that's approximately $165 an hour, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, yeah, dep yeah, depending on the, on the manpower, what work is going to be done. That's correct. Yeah, per, per man. That's correct. So, 
And then the rental of the backhoe, would that come out of the recreation fund or grant money? No, but that would have to be operational. Yeah. The construction, so yeah. man hours for this. And the disposal of the debris? The disposal of any construction costs will come out of the, the uh, if, the, if the board agrees, the construction and engineering will come out of the recreation fund. The operational component will have to come out of the general fund. Okay, thanks. If people think it's a good thing, if it comes out of the $100,000 grant money from Entergy, that would be something different. Um, because when we have our Buchanan Day events um, that our, our highway or whoever's uh, working overtime that day, that money comes out of the grant money that we get from Entergy. So that oh, I, I, we, I just don't remember there being a lot of enthusiasm for the installation of this. I don't remember. I remember there being a lot of discussions. I think I was against it. There were a couple other people who were against it. And if we're not willing to go the full distance with the project, I don't think we should start it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, we're ready to go the full distance. Marcus, okay. is there, are you sure, that, or maybe Stephanie, there's no way to, to uh, reimburse the, uh, the rental of a, a backhoe for a day, uh, concrete dumping, and for that matter, even the, even the labor expended cannot be transferred either from the rec fund or from the, the, the grant money um, that Teresa referred to. That could not be used to, to, re, to, do a, to do a transfer so that it's not coming out of the village budget at all. If it's part of the project to construct the kayak launch, any money expended for that can become out of the grant or the recreation. But when it comes to operational, the day-to-day -day operational of the kayak center, taking the docks out or whatever on an annual basis, that's operational. Well, those are those are very. Um, I'm, I'm it, talking about a, that's not a very on. elaborate process, I don't believe. But the I'm talking about the the work done to to fix the old to remove the old concrete and to anchor the uh, you know it basically comes as a modular. Uh, it comes in a few modules that get assembled in the field. Uh, it's not it's not a huge uh, prolonged project, but obviously it would come if the highway department is going to do it, so it would save us money. So what I'm asking is, is there no way to do a budget transfer from the in from the fund source to the village to comp to cover that? If it's part it's part of the overall project to construct, which means remove all the old stuff, put in the new stuff and the labor costs and the rental costs and everything else that goes along with the project. That's part of the project that can come out of the recreational degree. Okay, and that's all I'm asking, Mark. That's I it. understand yeah, okay. the early movement obviously yeah. can't. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm talking yeah. about the the installation of the project, purchase of the equipment, the installation, the modifications, yeah. all the uh, DEC requirements, the disposal of the, the, the debris, all of that, if, if it doesn't have to come out of our budget and it comes out of a different a different mm -hmm. revenue stream that's fine obviously oh you can't charge to take the dock in and out every year correct you know what I mean? correct yeah. correct all right so that that's what i was asking okay. yep and, and and to answer the other question we won't know that information until the D, uh, to the application or the permit is put it to the dec uh because that would be a scope of work in regards to what was necessary to remove the docks or move the deck and what's, uh, what the DEC allows us to remove and put back in. So the first step that the board wants to do is to just get the engineering started, and then we can get pricing as the engineering go progresses, and okay. then the board can approve whatever work has to be done after that. But, but if the board wants to move forward with this, I would definitely recommend that you it, it, that part of the approval besides hiring Han to do the work is where the money's gonna come from. So that way you can get it all done tonight if the board wishes to move forward right. that way. I, I think the big question at this point is if the board wants this to happen, and if they do, then we have to vote on the $3,500 to approve that. If the board doesn't want it to happen, there's no point in voting on the $3,500. What is driving this? Is there big community feedback for, for kayak launch? What's, what's the drive? Is the, um, I've, gotten, I've gotten some feedback, some, a couple of emails, and um, uh, I know that there are, some, that there are people interested in if there's anybody that's attending the meeting now that would like to comment, that's this, this would be a good time. If you have, if you, if you could find the raise hand function on the uh, Zoom screen. 
Miss Kane has her hand up. Two people. Uh, okay, I'm going to miss Kane first. I'm going to sure. allow her to speak. Okay, Miss Kane, you you can unmute yourself. Or you can speak. Hi, thank you. Hi, hi, Mayor. Yes, we are definitely in support of it. Um, I think the whole you know talk about the revitalization of the waterfront is. A, I've seen a lot of you know on that topic around, and I think that this would just contribute to it. And I think. Uh, Mr. Zachary pointed out that the continuation of the walking trail there has brought a lot more attention to the park in that area. And I have had, you know, comments from people outside of the village who have said, hey, you know, that would be something that they would wait, be interested in coming and using. Um, and there was no really talk in that right there about the fact that there would be uh, permitting. I mean, this would bring, I mean, it, I know it wouldn't be a ton of money, but it would be, bring money in to charge people to use this. So all in all, I, for us, we thought it sounded like a great idea. And you, you're a village resident and it's something that you would use? Yes. Mm -hmm. Terrific. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, okay. Okay, yes, uh, Donna, let me allow her to speak. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Hello. Okay, great. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not used to doing this. Um, I, I kind of agree um, with the previous speaker. Um, I kayak frequently. I meet people from all over the place, always looking for an access point on the Hudson. Um, and Lentz Cove is rather unsightly where the old boat launches. Um, and downright unsafe if you see people fishing um, down there, you know, it's a fall risk. If it's going to need the repairs anyway, why not invest in something going forward? I mean, Peekskill has a rental company that rents kayaks out of there. Um, and Echo, uh, is it Echo Point in Croton? They have a, um, a rental company there. So there's also a possibility to generate money that will make it pay for itself. And I agree, it puts Buchanan on the map because we're right next to the walkway. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Hi. Yeah. Donna. yeah. And Donna, you're also a resident of the village, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Donna, do you have a lot, is there a lot of uh, a desire to enter, you know, from Buchanan area? Is it, is it, a, is it I mean, I, I don't really know much about the kayaking. And uh, um, I'm just, just like, I, I asked about the drive, where this comes from, because I just want to know what it, what it's about. Like if the community wants it, I, I'm all for it. I just, you know, if, if there's a big need for it and there's, a, and, and the community is, is pushing it, I, I, it sounds good to me. I just, I just want to know what the desire is. Like is, yeah. is, is Lens Cova a desired area to, to go out and kayak? Well, well, one thing is, uh, you know, you get a lot of casual um, paddleboard, kayak, canoe people who would go in a sheltered area. And from, from Lens Cove, you go out about a thousand feet before you're in the open Hudson, because yeah. you have the sheltered area from the, from Indian, between Indian Point, um, you know, the property there where it juts out and the, uh, the docks from the boat yards is about, you know, so there's a sheltered area uh, more experienced kayakers would go, might go out into the current of the Hudson, but a lot of casual people would love a, a sheltered area like that, like Annsville, which is a small sheltered area. If you go, if you go over the bridge there towards Annsville Circle, you'll see people kayaking there. Again, that's a sheltered area. There are people that are more adventurous. I've seen them from the train out in the middle of the river. I mean, or you can go along the side where in Croton Bay where it's calm, but. It depends on your 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 skill level, your comfort level, but it would definitely provide a uh, a, a safe and and when and it's a pretty spot there, you know. I can, I can understand that it's that it is a good point. However, you know, our funds we, we try to expend our funds as diligently for village residents. But you know, having people coming in from outside of the village to use our resources is one thing. But if, we, if we're gonna gear this towards people who are coming into the village to use yeah. our services, it'd be kind of hard to use the recreation fund because the recreation fund was created by uh, builders who build multifamily homes who didn't have recreation areas. 
And that's why when the fund was set up, it says to acquire and equip new recreation right. areas. And it's to supplement the, the smaller lot sizes yeah. that we have. I'm not so sure we should be expending our funds to develop something that's going to be used primarily by people who well, are outside. I think, I think of, you would get both. And I have trouble with that way of thinking because look, I live in this area. I, my wife walks on the Pigsco sure. waterfront. I go kayaking down in Croton. I go hiking in Croton Point Park. I also go hiking at Lens Cove Park. It's, you gotta be, you gotta picture yourself as part of a whole community. You can't be isolationist as a sure. 2200 person village. We don't have the resources. We need to use other things in the area and we need to allow other people to use our stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's the people that like that tend to be uh, people that, you know, people that do those kinds of things tend to be respectful of the area. They're not, they're not gonna be leaving litter. It's, you know, there's a out, outdoors people tend to be very, have a high consciousness level as far as, you know, not leaving garbage and things like that. Uh, I think you have to view Buchanan as part of the larger area. People love this area because of access to a wide variety of things and we just wanna be part of that fabric. I have trouble with trying to, uh, uh, you know, this isn't Greenwich, Connecticut where we're gonna exclude people or, you know, from, from a private beach. Uh, I think we need to be part of the whole community and public Buchanan residents will use it. And if somebody, uh, else from somebody from Peekskill or Croton or Cortland or Montrose wants to use it. I mean, I don't think we're going to be getting people coming from Rhode Island and, and uh, Pennsylvania to use it, but it's going to be the local people that use everything up and down the river. Well, I, I think uh, my comment is that I'm, I was kind of, you know, like in, in the area of saying, well, how much is going to get used? But after listening to Ms. Kane and Ms. Bauer, they brought up a good point about uh, you know, they'll fix it up first off, fixing up an area that is really decrepit right now. That's one thing. A and also, I was thinking along the lines that if we attract, if we start to build something that is more attractive, because really right now there's very little down there that is very attractive, that it might, it might start the, the ball rolling towards other people's coming and saying, well, why, why don't we do this or why don't we do that? Because we need to get more participation from people in the village, and or even a, a, you know from surrounding communities. And as you're on that committee, Nick, and I, I know that several of the other people are on the committee, and you, we don't want to be left out of the thing. So I don't think the cost is that much. And since it would be coming from the funds that that, that uh, Entergy has has left with us, uh, I. I, I would be for it right as of now. I wasn't that much before, but now listening to a couple of people, it's changed my mind. You know, I, I kind of wonder how many people in the village really realize that we're discussing this tonight too. Yep. The area needs to be revitalized. I mean, if this is, is this kind of effort is to improve the area, then I'm all for it. It could be temporary until we get a developer to come in there like we're looking to do and build what we really want there. But to, to revitalize it small for now, I think it's a good idea because it's, it's, it's an accident waiting to happen down there. All right. Yeah, that concrete needs to be addressed. Right. Um, so, so Nick, you're also saying you could put a canoe on that and, and other things. And it's a, it, it's a yeah, move I mean, up, I've, right? I've never done paddle boarding. I think they just kind of mm. put it in the water and get on it somehow. <laughs> but but uh, the kayak, you can't, you know, uh, you sort of work from shore, you get in it and launch yourself. And, the, and these just, it, they make it easier to do. And for any, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 72 and I'm in pretty good shape, but I'm, I'm like, I look like a very awkward klutz getting in and out of my kayak. Once I'm in, I'm a dolphin, you know. <laughs> so it gives you a, 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 a you know, for, for anybody, it makes it easier to get in and out. It's, and it encourages people to do it. All right, sounds good. All right, I think, you know, and I've had a few people that aren't, you know, aren't on tonight, but they also expressed an interest in their village residents too, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna make a motion to authorize James Hahn Engineering to prepare and submit required documentation to the DEC in the amount of $3,500 as well as create a scope of work to install a kayak launch. On a motion. I move. Second. Second. Yeah, second. 
All in favor? On a question? Aye. I'm sorry, oh. on a question. I thought we had. On a question, we should add in there that the money comes from the grant money from Entergy instead of the recreation fund because sure. the interpretation is not clear in the legislation which established the recreation okay. fund. And the monies will come from the Entergy grant that was that we had gotten. Okay, good. The Let's recreation go. fund is pretty clear that the money can be used for um, for improvements and, and expansion right. of recreation programs and specifically says not for maintenance and repairs. It says improvements? It doesn't say the acquisition and equipping of new recreation facilities? It doesn't have to be, no, I think it, it, uh, okay. it you know, what did we use for? Did, what, did, did we use some of that for the ball field, was it? Yes. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be, there's this the okay. acquisition of a new, uh, of new property, it could be, uh, basically expansion and I mean, find, get it and read it through, but I think it, it specifically oh, we already says- voted on this anyway. I mean- No, we didn't vote on it, Anthony. It's on the question. Yep, it's oh, on the question, question now. Sean, yep. do you have any other question comments? No, I just, I just would like the money to come out of the grant money like we had previously yeah. discussed, but okay. if, if they're in opposition, if there's opposition to that, you know. No, no opposition to that, that's fine. Okay. So that, and I'll add on that the grant, the money to, to do this will come from the energy grant money. So we did on a motion, second, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, passed, unanimous. Thank you to the people that commented tonight. Thank you. Okay. So the next is, um, we had discussed this before we had gotten money um, from the federal COVID relief funds and uh, two of the suggestions to use that money for was an airlift pump and manholes. So uh, that money that we had got once again, Marcus, what was it about $140,000 from the COVID relief funds? Yes, yeah, so like 130 something. Okay, so the, the purchase of this will come out of that um so and this is in the um so we have to approve this so that we can um get this role in here um so i'd like to make a motion to authorize james hahn engineering to go out to bid for the airlift pump and manholes and uh on a motion so move. second okay. all in favor aye. 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 Yep. Aye. Uh, can i just ask a question was this discussed at the last workshop this was discussed what, about a month, two months ago. A, a couple months ago, when we were yeah. talking about capital projects and stuff like that. Um, oh, okay. We were okay. talking about putting I, together the bonds. We had I'm, several pumps we wanted to work on. Yeah, I kind of I couldn't quite remember what what these items were. What are the airlift pumps? What are they? It, it, They're for the, for the waste wastewater uh, wastewater treatment plants. They a geyser pumps. Remember we, uh, um, uh, Nick, you were discussing how it was was spelled geyser pumps. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. As I thought that remi oh, reminds yeah, you. I, I couldn't Mark make a connection. All right, thank you. <laughs> Threw you off, right, Nick? Yes. Okay. It's coming back to me now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so the next is we're going to consider a motion to deem the following items surplus, the 1998 fire truck, the 1989 GMC sweeper, the 1997 Chevy pickup, and look at the dates on some of these things, and two Cub Cadet mowers, um, the company that will be um, auctioning this off is um, Auctions International. And I'd like to mention at this time, the new fire truck went into service last evening. So that now is operational. So this is uh, the 1998 fire truck is definitely surplus now. So on a motion to I'll move. Second. Second. On a question. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the next, this is pretty standard, motion to extend seasonal highway help as follows. Matt Eichler extended until September 3rd and Peter O'Neill extended until September 17th. Um, so on a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the next is a motion to appoint two people and we do this every year. We have seasonal, we have seasonal summer help, we have seasonal fall help. So with the, the help with the leaves. 
So um, to make a motion to appoint uh, two people as seasonal highway help at a rate of $14 per hour, Matt Eichler from October 4th to December 23rd, 2021, and Peter O'Neill from October 18th to December 3rd, 2021. On a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next, um, we had received a complaint um, about the sidewalk outside of Fat Sal's. Um, the engineer uh, was in the village last week. He had looked at that and the road work that we're gonna be doing. And uh, the highway department put a temporary patch in. So what's happening is the, our sidewalk outside seems to have dropped. So there was a pretty, pretty much of a big lip going into Fat Sal. So it is our sidewalk. Um, and the cost, the cost to do that is, is $6,000, which the money will be coming out of our contingency fund to do that. So on a motion to authorize the repair of the sidewalk located at 263, 265 Tate Avenue and to approve a change order for Consorti Brothers paving and seal coating in the amount of 6,000 and to authorize the transfer from contingency 001-1990-460 to sidewalks 001-5410-460 in the amount, once again, of $6,000. So on a motion? So moved. Second? Second. On a question? On a yeah, question. How, big, how long a piece of sidewalk is there? How many feet would you say that is, Marcus? Six oh, it has to be, uh, to be no, probably 20, it's the entire length um, of the sidewalk in front of Fat Sal's. So it's the entire length. If you drive by, you'll see it. It's all the way to, across the entire front. It actually has sunken down. Yeah. Okay. It's the both ent they have two entrances in. Both entrances have that, that big lip. That's correct. Is the, does the curb have to get redone, or are we just bringing the sidewalk up to the existing curb? We're just replacing the sidewalk. The curb was fine. Okay. Correct. Because the sidewalk uh, sunk in, and the curb stayed pretty good. That's correct. Curb is good. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Motion. I have a question. Sure. Uh, the sidewalk repair. I mean, obviously, has this has this been uh, happened quickly, or would it happen over time? Do is there is there an issue under the sidewalk drainage, a sewer leak, a water leak, or something that's making the sidewalk before we spend six thousand dollars on it? Have we looked into this, investigated it a little bit more than just patching it? I think, I, well, it's going to be completely taken out, but I, I think, you know, we did a temporary patch last week because it was a safety issue, but I think until they dig that sidewalk up, we, yeah, we won't know. And I, I thought that was kind of strange that that sidewalk just suddenly, it wasn't well, sudden, I don't know how long, because I, you know, we were just notified like a couple of weeks ago, so, yeah. you know, I don't know. Well, you could have a sewer leak, a water leak, you could have something under there that's, that's eroding the sub, sub base. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, you open up that sidewalk, you could be opening up a can of worms. So I, I just, you know. Yeah. yeah. At, a, at a minimum, it's going to have to be, uh, you know, the, 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 the base, the gravel, whatever you call that material they put underneath. They're going to have to do a lot of compacting and, you know, they're yeah, going to have to treat it as though, that, as, as though it had given a little bit. Uh, I, and I guess once they pull it up, if there's some major issue, it'll be apparent, hopefully. Well, that's why the timing is important, because if it happens suddenly, then it, there is an issue. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll have to. Uh, Marcus, if you could speak to the owner tomorrow and ask them how long that's been like that. Was it a sudden thing? Or, you know, the issue is it's our sidewalk, and if somebody gets hurt, it's a liability to us at this point. But yeah, I, I do I understand agree. what you're saying. But I don't want to open it up and, and have, uh, you know, is the 6,000 turns into 36,000 because you're repairing the sewer line and, and you're ripping up curb, you're going out into the street to tie into the sewer. I mean, it could be just about anything. Well, well another thing is drop. But and Anthony, it, what's, what's, the alter, what's the alternative? I mean, you're in the business kind of. Well, the alternative, you, you, you have to dig it out. You have to dig a test pit. So it has to be opened anyway, regardless. But right. I didn't know if the engineer looked into it any deeper like if it was a, just i'm just looking for a time frame of the drop right, right. Drop quick and was well, it sudden uh change in the elevation is, 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 can I, uh, the problem just, could be the, the uh 
it, it could be a problem under fat sales and then it's not the village's problem. Yeah, that's true. Right. No, it could be that's, that's could... a good point. And I think we need to point this out to them before we start work. Because if you look at that sidewalk, then there's like, they have, it's like a retaining wall and the steps down into their um, entry area. So that if their retaining area where, the, where it goes down, where they have a couple of tables, if that, if their retaining wall has, um, is, is, is giving in any way, that could be why the, the sidewalk portion, um, you know, receded a bit. So we have to, we might need to, before we begin work, uh, examine their, um, the wall that forms their, their front pit, where you go down the stairs into the entry area and make sure that that's intact. If there's any um, sign of cracking or, or giving in that, in that, then, then, you know, we need to we need to come up with a solution because that could fall on them and you know if we if we we you know it might we don't want to have a situation sort of like you know you, you drop something in the store you got to pay for it you know you broke it you you pay for it if we if we start compacting that sidewalk and then their wall gives who's that on mm -hmm. so we we might need to look at that first all right well i know the good, uh, good point uh, anthony good starting that conversation there mm -hmm. Thanks. There's a reason it dropped. Okay, so now that we've had that conversation, I forgot where we left off. It was on a motion, second on a question. That's where we left off? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Aye. I mean, well, Marcus, aye. Tomorrow, in favor. Please in favor. call. Please. Yes. Yes, yeah. no problem. I'll take care of it. And if you get a chance, maybe walk down and look at the wall itself. I, I was there. I don't remember seeing a problem with the wall. But then again, I'm not an engineer. So. Yeah, I, I walked on their side. I didn't see anything, but I'll take a closer look. Okay, good. Yeah, that wall could not, may, maybe not draining properly. And any construction they have done could be the cause of this, this problem. That could be it, too. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. Thanks, Anthony. Okay, um, this is something we've discussed before. Um, everyone realizes that the sale of cannabis is gonna be allowed. So um, <clears throat> I'd like to schedule a public hearing for the October 5th, 2021 meeting um, on the sale of cannabis within the village. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? On a question. Oh, I'm sorry, on a question, go ahead. I know uh, a few months back we had discussed this at a couple of meetings. And uh, we we had a course of action. I was wondering what's what occurred to bring it back up to uh, reevaluate the situation. You know, I I, I think um, people have heard about what's going on and they wanted to comment on that. So um, I just thought it was appropriate to have a public hearing so that people could comment. So we had members of the public have requested a public hearing, or yes, they wanted to be heard. Okay, they wanted to be heard. So we'll we'll do that. What is the Okay, so if it's a public hearing, that usually means there's a piece of legislation or, or a proposal. Uh, do we and do we have that? We have to opt in or opt out. Or no, we, we don't, don't have to opt out. Or you no, don't have to opt, don't out. opt Okay, you're right. We so what is a public hearing? Is this just a public comment or is it a hearing? It's, it's a public hearing so that people can express their thoughts and, and concerns or for, for pro, for con. I think we should we should hear from the public and then also, you know, if the board decides this is something they would like to see in the village for whatever reasons, I, I think there has to be. Um, so I'd like to talk about this at the workshop a little bit, you know, what the requirements, you know, would it be X amount of feet from a school, perhaps? Um, would you like to have the lounge? Would you not like to have the lounge? You know what I mean? So there's perimeters. To, to this, so that's all. Okay. That's all. Okay, so we'll discuss okay. it at the workshop a little bit more. We'll, uh, Marcus, if you could please get everyone a copy of the uh, New York State law so that we can go from that with the discussion. Sure. Uh, I have a question, yeah. Teresa. Sure. So Stop. normally when you're gonna have a public hearing, I advertise that. Oh, Is yes. that what you'd like me to do? Yes, could you please? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So we just want no public comment. There's no specific resolution nope. right now. So what, I mean, normally when we advertise a public hearing, it's, in, it's to respond to a specific resolution or proposed legislation. So 
Um, I don't think it has to be, you know, just to that. I think, I think Nick, I, I think what it is is that, you know, given that there's a lot of controversy about it and a lot of people want to be able to, to, to say what they, what they feel about the sale of or whatever about marijuana. It's, it's a hot button issue. So I, I think we, we, you know, we don't have to have a wall ready to go, go yeah. ready to go. Yeah. We right. just want to hear, and you know what? If, it, if, if we have a public hearing and like you know, two people make a comment, then we know that we let the people in the village have their say. And if they don't want to say that, they evidently then don't care about which way. So it, we could take it from there. Okay. And I think Nick also, this is a little bit different because if you don't opt out, you're in, and people might not understand. Yeah. Right. You know, right. um, it's not like we can have a public hearing to opt in or out. You only need one if you're going to opt right. out. So right. I think you're just well, giving you could, people a, have a chance to be heard. legislation would have to be the, to opt out, Correct. and then the board could be planning to vote against it, against opting out. If we need a piece of legislation um, to, to advertise the, for the meeting, that could be the legislation, and the board would... No. No, you don't need legislation to opt out. You just don't have legislation. <laughs> well, we could have a piece of legislation to opt out and then yeah. vote against opting out. Okay, but we don't have that ready because <laughs> I didn't prepare do it. We need, and, and, okay. we and you do. That. Before you call for a public hearing, okay. you have to have it. So Because a hearing it, implies this is the something exact more discussion than we had a couple public. months ago. Yeah. A, a hearing implies more than just getting comments from the public. I think it's appropriate we hear from the community on this issue. No, I, I agree. I just don't know what the it doesn't. It's not a normal procedure for a public hearing. It's just a we'll be discussing it at the workshop, and you and we'd like your input. Let's just call it a public discussion then. Public discussion. <laughs> there we go. Public comment. Public discussion. All right, Rich. Yeah. Public input. Okay, so what do you want me to call it? <laughs> All of the above. Let's call it a public hearing. Oh, and well. we'll we'll develop the legislation afterwards. Yeah, How's that? we could discuss it more at the workshop too. Okay, so did we vote on this? Because we get into these, uh, it was on a on a question. I think we, we didn't left, vote yet, right? So all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so um, this is something we've discussed before. Uh, consider motion to pay MJM Productions a fee of four fifty for filming board meetings. Uh, Mike Miner has been with us for over 20 years, hasn't raised his prices in many, many years. Um, he will now be filming um, our, well, he has been filming our board meetings. So the fee will be $450. So on a motion to improve, approve the payment to MJM Productions for filming board meetings. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? On a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I always forget on a question. Well, uh, you know, we had we had discussed this at the last couple of meetings because we were having public meetings, and also we had eliminated the uh, the videography of the planning and zoning board meetings because we were, we were had gone live too. So the legislation that Stephanie sent out said that we we have to broadcast the public meetings as well as transcribe them. So will this con will we now be going back? to having the planning and zoning boards recorded and, and aired also. And will that, as well as the, uh, as well as the workshop uh, meetings. I know when we get into this, uh, you know, now that we're back to Zoom for now, we're gonna see how things go. Um, I know this law is till January, but I'm kind of hoping you know, things calm down a little bit so we can go back to in-person meetings. But um, Stephanie, could you answer uh, Sean's question on that? Do Would, would that law cover um, also filming the planning and the zoning boards also? Yes, yep. Good. People right. have to, you don't, you don't necessarily have to film it. People have to be able to participate. So Zoom, uh, filming, whichever way you wanna do it. But Sean's right, you have to advertise it. They have to be given an opportunity to be heard like tonight when they can raise their hands. And the law is really clear on transcribing. And I think Marcus, I talked to you about this when it first began. And I think you said there's a Zoom. Zoom can keep transcripts or does keep transcripts in case you need them in the future if anybody ever, you know, foiled it or wanted it. 
Correct, correct. That's a third party application that take the Zoom video and transcribes it. That's correct. And they're being kept, these videos? Yes. Okay, yes. good, good. Yes. Well, they, they have to be transcribed so somebody, like Stephanie says, can FOIL. So if somebody can come down and FOIL next, this month's meeting, they should, it has to be available, correct? That's correct, yeah. yes. Yes. Yep. And all the videos, all these videos will be on our website as well, like the way we were before. Yeah. And also, uh, I, I believe that the law that was passed that runs until January 15th of 2022 makes it optional to have meetings this way. It's not a requirement, correct? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And Sean, so, I, so you know, I did make that decision um, in because there was an uptick, just I'm glad you brought that up. There was an uptick in August. We had 19 positive cases here in the village. So we were seeing a pretty substantial uptick. Uh, July, there were only four positive. So um, that's why, you know, with this meeting, you know, uh, just for the safety of everyone, you know, I, I made the decision to put it um, back on Zoom. I'm kind of hoping I'm going to monitor this month where we are with everything. Um, hopefully October, because we have the public hearing on the marijuana, uh, I'm kind of hoping that we're back in person. If we're not back in person there, it, it upticks. Maybe we could do at the pavilion if it's not too chilly. Um, so for, the, for this evening, because of where we were with everything going on with the upticks, I figured just, you know, and, and we, we've had, of course, a few of our our board members who have contacted COVID. So I just, you know, wanted to keep everybody safe, so. Um, can I, a couple of things. The, um, in the July 27th workshop, the video options we discussed were uh, 350, which did not include a live stream for, the, for regular meetings, 350 per meeting. Uh, the 450 now, is it, does it include a live stream? Or is still we're still just relying on on people going to the Zoom link. And Nick, uh, you missed the last workshop. Um, there was some um, after we discussed those options. Mike Miner came back and said that um, the three fifty, um, he hasn't increased the fees in years, and his fee has to be four fifty. It was not financially feasible for him to continue, so the four fifty would be his basic fee to continue to continue filming the meetings with Zoom okay. or or live. Okay, so then for people to uh, to follow the meetings, they have to go to the Zoom link on our correct. website. Correct, that's correct. Okay, so in that case, I would like to complain about our new website. It used to be first thing you saw when you got on the front page. Now, in order to get to uh, a meeting, you've got to go to the website, then you've got to click on government, then you've got to click on board of trustees, then you've got to click on agendas, and then you've got to click on the date of the meeting. Can we, if, if people, if we're going to be relying on people uh, finding the Zoom link, can we put something right on the first page for the meeting so that it's right there? I think, I think it's kind of, the, the new website looks better, but I don't think it works better. Um, and, um, um, you know, I kind of commented on that when it first came about, but, but um, specifically for, finding the Zoom link, you've got to go through five steps. And I think we need to get it right on the homepage. You open the Village of Buchanan website, and right there, there's got to be something that says, you know, tonight's meeting, Zoom link, or something. Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with you, Nick. Could you could you look into that, Marcus? So sure, I'll, I'll talk to the web designer see if we can fix that. But just to let everybody know, too, anybody who's signed up for either face, a Facebook post or email blast, the link is right there as well. So if people have registered, they'll get that information, but I'll talk to the web designer to see if we can put something right on the homepage as well. So Marcus, I know you mentioned that last month when I asked that same question, what are the percentage of residents that have signed up for those two avenues to be notified of the meetings? I don't know the exact number, but I keep on, it's on every newsletter to let people know that they can register to get e to get emails of all the meetings, uh, but definitely, um, if the number is not as high as I would like it to be, about uh, how many people then? Just around about how many people? You don't got to give me a percentage. How many people? I don't know. I have to look up how many okay. people signed up. You know, we, I can get the number. I don't use Facebook, but I, I mean, I, I go on the page and 
and it tells you how many people are following. Uh, I think it's in, the, is it like five, 600 or something? Well, there's 2,300 residents. So yeah. if only 500 yeah. people have signed up, they're the only people getting notifications. Right, sure. right. And here's another point that over the years, I think the most, the people most likely to watch our meetings are seniors. And I can tell you, there's probably a pretty small percentage of seniors that are using Facebook and Zoom to watch our meetings. So we're kind of leaving out a whole segment here uh, by not having like a live stream on the um, public access channel or something. So uh, well, if we're interested in reaching the most, huh? It's posted to our, our channel also, our village access channel, which isn't like- But the meeting's not there. Well, yeah, our meeting, yeah. it gets posted. The after meeting is the live after. on the public access well, channel? Not on live, it, not live, but the next day it, it gets uploaded. They can watch it. They okay, can, so they can't watch it live, but they can. Go, but the next day they can watch it. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, what was I going to say? I think the only other thing we had it to do, uh, Sean was on a question. All in favor? Aye. 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 So now the next one is um, we're someone has uh, requested the use of Lens Cove parking lot for overflow parking for September 11th event at the factory of contingent on proper insurance. So I know uh, Marcus has been involved with our broker. Uh, Marcus, would you like to give us an update of where this is at this time? So uh, it looks like we're making some progress. I just got to update it uh, information today to the insurance broker, he had additional questions in regards to additional coverages. So hopefully um, if you guys, if the board is willing to approve it, contingent to having the proper insurance, I think we'll continue working with the individual to get the proper insurance to allow them to use the uh, parking lot. But uh, as long as they provide the proper insurance, that's where we are right now. Okay. What is the event, by the way? Nash Kill, Nash, it's not Nashville. I think it's Nash Kill. Kill, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a music event. Country mm -hmm. music event, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not a. Is it is it a September 11th memorial event, or it just no. happens to be on September 11th? Just happens to be on September 11th. Okay. Okay. So, on a motion to authorize the use of Lens Cove parking lot for over overflow parking for September 11th event, um, contingent on proper insurance, contingent on the village receiving the proper, proper insurance. So moved. Second. Second. On a question. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Hey, so, oh, sorry, Rich, move your camera down a little bit so we can see you better. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. So the next is um, we had some residents um, put in an application to use the pavilion for a fundraiser for a local person who is um, has some medical issues. So um, um, I'd like to consider a motion to waive the fee and allow alcohol that at the September 18th, 2021 fundraiser for Walter Ostrowski at the pavilion and Marcus, we have received the proper insurance for that. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all in favor? You want a motion? Motion. Oh, motion. I'm sorry. And a motion yep. to waive the fee and allow alcohol at the September 18th, 2021 fundraiser. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. On a question. Yeah, I, I know I had uh, discussed this once before. Is there a part of our code that requires a resolution for the sale of alcohol? I know to use the use the mm -hmm. facility, but I don't ever remember uh, any part of our code that says it, it's required to be specifically stated if we need board approval for the sale of alcohol. It's just uh, a check mark on the on the permit. Yeah, uh, Shane, I think the police chief did find it. Uh, I'll have him pull it out and email to the whole board. I okay. think he did find it one of the meetings before. Yeah, and I think it's a policy um, that we have to just make sure that we have the proper insurance if alcohol is going to be involved, you know, to protect the village. I would presume that the insurance company would charge mo the person more if they know that there's alcohol involved. They do, and that's one of the reasons why it's a check mark on on the uh, application, and it's for those types of verifications. Mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't know that there was an actual part of our code that's that codifies the somebody giving alcohol. 
You know, I, I, I'm sure you need the uh, permits if you're going to sell it, but not to give it. You know, so. And Marcus, I, Marcus, you said there is. Yeah, I think Sean, uh, I think the police chief did find something okay. in the code. Cool. But I, I forgot where it was, but I asked him to pull it out tomorrow. Yeah, if you could just, just email me the, the yes. code number, okay? Yep, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I don't, I, I'd have to look it up, but I do remember there being some specific wording okay. that the village in the code that says the village board can um, um, allow the use of alcohol that we have. And when we've done it in the past, we've done it by a motion, not by resolution. Um, you know, okay. or as part of the uh, pavilion use paperwork, we've never had a separate resolution for it. Well, oh, yeah, it's under open containers. I was just looked at a 45 dash oh. one. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so it's in there, it's, it's totally illegal unless by uh, any general specific permit issued by any agency authorized to do so. So okay. uh, we assume that to be the village right. board. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Marcus. Um, and so all in favor, aye. 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 No one. Okay, the next is a motion to modify the street opening permits as recommended. Um, George Palmer looked into that. Um, so I, I'm going to read his memo. Based on the recent gas main work along Blakely Avenue and Broadway, the village should review and revise the fees associated with road opening permits. Currently the minimum fee for the typo is commercial. It's for all, all, it's for commercial and residential is $300, which the village should consider increasing to 350. This amount should include work up to 100 linear feet of road work. Projects requiring more than 100 linear feet of disturbance should include a fee of 350 per linear feet for the total length of disturbance. This is based on the $7,000 invoice um, for the work on Broadway and Blakely that he that he did when um, Con Ed opened up those roads. So um, that's what our engineer is recommending um, that we do to change that. At three hundred, at three fifty per linear foot, seven thousand dollar invoice. Does that mean it was two hundred, two hundred feet of uh, road frontage? Because three dollars and fifty cents times two hundred is seven thousand. Was that two thousand feet of? Was that uh, two hundred feet of road frontage? I don't have that exact it, it, number. I don't. It was. It was all. It was a mostly all, all. All of Blakely, and then and. Oh, then Broadway. it was easily two hundred feet. And, and Broadway. Okay, then it was. Yeah. Oh, I, the work that they were doing there last year. That that was easily two hundred feet. Okay. More than two hundred feet. Yeah. 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 More than. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um, we're going to do a motion to modify the street opening permit as recommended by our village engineer. Um, and we're gonna change the 300 fee to 350, if that's all right with the board. Mm -hmm. And- um, so We gotta make a motion to- Yep, and, and, and on a motion to do that. Come on. And, and then uh, above 100 feet, 350 per linear feet. Correct. Mm -hmm. As per George's, uh, the engineer's uh, recommendations. Yeah, okay. I, I, I agree with them. Okay. I'm good. Okay, so on a motion, second. Second. Um, all in favor? On a question. Aye. I was going to get to that after the okay. all in favor. <laughs> so last month when we discussed this, uh, the question that I had was for the commercial work. I didn't receive a second memo from George. He, George sent out a second memo with that correction because one of the questions I had asked was whether we can uh, charge residential different than commercial. So you got a memo from George stating that we had to change it or? No, it was just George saying that, that he had a typo and I don't know, uh, Stephanie, could you comment on that? Can we charge separate for uh, residential commercial? Would you? You know, the test is always, is there a rational basis for distinguishing between them, right? So if the street opening is no different, it's not wider, it's not more intense, it's not more expensive for commercial versus residential, then it should be the same, in my opinion. Well, um, the, I, the, the test would be that residential street opening permits are usually small in size, usually for one use, maybe a, a three quarter inch water line and a gas line, the, resi the uh, commercial, are the industrial size projects like we're seeing affect us right now, which are the installation of utilities. 
So they have a higher value associated with them because they endure greater inspection criteria. So that would be the, the line of delineation that I would use. Uh, as I had stated at the last meeting, I didn't have a problem with just bringing up the road opening fees to 350, but since the commercials were the ones that are uh, basically causing the biggest impact to our residents and to our tax base on the inspection criteria, I wanted to move the linear footage up to six feet, uh, six dollars per linear foot. And uh, Marcus had said that's a little bit high, but uh, they they use up a lot of our resources. And that's, those were the questions that I had last month uh, and wanted to try and change this. Yeah, uh, and, and Sean, just to answer that question a little bit is, um, and Stephanie, were, were, I can agree with me, the fee should be equal to what the service is being provided. So that's why, um, that's why George's comment will cover the cost of everything was done by Con Edison. So my concern, you go to $6 a square foot, Con Edison might ask, where's your backup for that? Uh, and we're doubling the fee, there might be an issue with the fee being charged higher than what the George Palmer recommended based on his services. So that was my only concern. Okay, but I think the bottom line is we wanna cover the <coughs> Con Ed, we'd incur yeah, right. with our engineer um, with whatever road openings they decide to do. Well, Hopefully they're done, but <coughs> who knows? Can I make a comment? I think in, for, for most commercial properties in the village and residential, it's not going to matter uh, in terms of the impact of opening roads, whether it's, um, you know, fat cells, gallon measure, my house, Anthony's house. If one of us has to open up the street because we want to get the gas service run in or, or we have to do a new line or something, it's going to be a, you know, it's probably going to be like a, a five by 10 uh, hole in the street. The issue is really when, as you said, Sean, when it's utilities, and I don't think any house is ever going to have to dig up 100 feet of road, nor is fat cells or gallon measure if they have to redo a gas line or a water line. So maybe what we do is have that three three hundred dollars or three hundred fifty cover a smaller up to twenty five linear feet, because it's only on those larger commercial projects and utility runs where um, you're going to be getting anything other than a small hole. So maybe we go up to 25 and then anything above 25 feet, we assign a dollar value. And uh, if it's justifiable, I wouldn't mind uh, going a higher than the 350 as Sean suggested. I don't know what the magic number is, but I think for normal road openings, you're talking about a small area and, in, and the hundred linear feet um, is not going to apply to like emerg most emergency repairs or adding up a gas service or, you know. That sounds good to me. You know, it isn't just Con Edison that this is affected. Uh, when Lafarge at the time increased their production, they dug up the road to install a larger water main. Right. And uh, Con Edison also put in uh, a new uh, tra transformers down on right. the ground. They dug up the road to install cables and they left it. Uh, basically uninhabitable for six months during the entire winter time and caused several yeah, yeah, car yeah. accidents. So I don't have a, I don't definitely don't have a, a problem going down to 25 linear feet. Would, sounds good. And but let's go to yeah. four linear feet. I mean, feet most, most, over. yeah, most of the holes are like one or two steel plates to yeah. cover them. So this way we'd be, we'd get more out of the larger uh, commercial projects uh, by, by starting at 25 after 25 feet with the per foot charge. Anthony, Anthony, what do you think? I think you ought to gauge that on the widest road you have in the village because you could get up to 40 feet to cross the street, to tie into a sewer, to tie into a, a gas main, to tie into water. Just make it at a 40 foot minim, uh, minimum. I mean, you, you, just because a, a commercial, like you said, a commercial and residential, it's going to be the same, same effect on a roadway. You know, it doesn't matter to tie in gas in, water in, sewer in, it doesn't matter. But I mean, the widest street, you could be 25, 30 feet across, complete crossing. So you want to go a little more than 25 feet, you know, and, uh, but your, your lateral runs, you know, perpendicular to the curb line, that's, that's what you guys are referring to. Is yeah, and, and I, I see your point because- When they the, take a lane the, out of the road to run a utility lane, that's, it's a whole different animal. 
you know, then yeah, then okay, because I I was thinking, I wasn't thinking, but the, the gas main might be on one side of the road. So if I, I might only have to dig up eight feet, whereas the, my neighbor across the street might have to dig yeah, up no, they're gonna have 30 to do feet. Crossing. Good point. All right, so a little bit more than 25 line, feet then. Five feet to the center line. So yeah, but, you want to complete the street. But but even but even with your analogy, Anthony, even if you had to go 10 extra feet, it's $40. Yeah. You know, so if you had to go 35 feet, it would be $390 instead of $350. We're looking for the, the habitual offenders, which are the, the utility companies. Yep. Oh, I, I don't think you want to take this out on the homeowners tying into a gas oh. main. I think you want to take it, you want to do, do it's oh. mostly commercial. Yeah. You know, but yeah. anyway, gas mains, Con Ed's going to open a street anyway to do that, but you, you don't want to take it out on for tying in for water or sewer. You know, yeah. That, but you know, Sean's point is right. If it's another ten feet, it's only another thirty-five bucks. Well, in, in 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 the in the literature, I would say just you know minimize it to forty feet, or what, even even if it is only ten dollars. This way, it shows it. All right, go to forty linear feet per road and four dollars per linear foot over to forty feet. How's that? Fantastic. Four dollars. I got four dollars. Can I get five? <laughs> okay, so we're we're not going to go according to our engineers' recommendations, but this is what the board would like to do. Okay, I, th I think oh, George would like that idea. You know, the board can vote on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think George will so like that I idea to, of that uh, lower footage. This. Okay, now I have to reword this. Okay, so I would like to make a motion now to um, consider increasing to three hundred and fifty dollars for the road opening permit. And the amount should include work up to 40 linear feet. And um, the projects that require more than 100 linear feet of disturbance should include a fee of $4 per linear foot for the no, total. The projects length. requiring more than 40 feet. Right. 40 feet. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what you said, yeah. We're yep. changing the 100 to 40. Okay, 40 feet. And um, requiring more than 100 linear feet of disturbance should include a fee of $4 per linear feet for the total length of disturbance. Now, do we hold a uh, do we hold a retainer for all that work? I, I don't know. I'm just asking a question. The bond. Do we have a bond for all that work. Hey, he's talking about escrow. Does Con Edison take out an escrow? No, no. Utilities don't take out the escrow, but if I'm not mistaken, residential applicants do. Is that correct, Mark? Residential and commercial. I, I just was wondering. If yeah. So, uh, no. Uh, 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 and. A residential house or anybody else would just charge, would just be paid, pay the fee, and that's it. And the criteria work to to restore the road is we don't hold them accountable for that. Um, yes, that they pay the fee. Uh, if any additional work has to be done, the engineer would go back to that homeowner or property owner to restore the road if if it sinks over time. Well, that's why we have bonds. That's why we should have a bond. We've we had for the road opening. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something you know, Marcus. Can can we, can yep. we look at that just to verify sure. that? I think that's important. So. Well, what about you know? We we've changed our code so that if anybody has to dig up the street like Conet did, uh, they're required to pay back to the center line, not just leave right. us with that long patch. Right. Uh, yeah. Is that apply to residential too? No. No, no. just a patch. All right. And this will also apply to new construction if somebody's putting in something new and they have to, you know, run new lines. But, you know, you're going to spend a half million dollars to build a new building and, uh, you know, this is going to add about 800 bucks to your costs. You know, even if you have to dig up 100 feet. It's not a huge amount of money for a major project. Yeah, well, Con Ed's going to pick up their gas, gas excavation. You know, and, and uh, you know, the water and sewer we have to pick up somehow. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I like, I like those adjustments the 40 and the $4. 40. Right. So I, I did all that. I read that out on a motion. All, all, um, okay. All so good. on a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Opposed? No? Okay. We'll move on to the next. Um, 
Okay, so the next is, um, you know, we've been talking to Bell Engineering um, about the waiting pool at, at the uh, pavilion, not at the pavilion, but at the pool there. And um, Nancy's not with us this evening, but she can come to the next meeting. But um, she had said that it's important for the camp that the waiting pool um, is, is repaired and up and running again. And Marcus, um, everyone has a copy of Bell Engineering here? I have. Okay, yeah. because the, the, the cost of doing this is, is really, it's gonna be around 100,000. So the uh, Bell Engineering is the one that would be doing all of the, I mean, it lists what they're gonna do, the, the geometric study, preliminary design, final design, um, working with us with the bidding process, and then also dealing with the Westchester County Department of Health. And their fee comes to approximately 15000 So this May is- May I ask a question, uh, yeah. Mayor? It, the waiting pool, you're talking about that small round pool for like yes. little toddlers? Yes. Are we talking about spending $100,000 for that? Boy, that's a lot of money. I don't know how much no. use that gets, does it? I, I, Nancy says, you know, for the camp, it does. I know, I know it's a lot of money. I, I, you well, know. What age, how low of an age does the camp go? I don't remember. I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, a six year, uh, I would imagine it's not lower than six. And a six year old is not going to use a wading pool. They want to go to the swimming pool. I don't know. If it, uh, I mean, I, I got a concern about the necessity of this. Okay. The waiting pool could probably the waiting pool, if I remember correctly, only fit maybe three people and four people, and it's only about a foot and a half deep, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really that just it's like 10, 10 feet in diameter. Yeah, and this is not a splash pad, so this is like a little waiting pool. Yeah, and yeah. when we discussed it, it turned out that doing a just doing like a sprinkler thing was going to cost even more a for some bizarre it. bizarre reason. Yeah. I mean, I think it's an insane price. $100,000 for a little round pool? Yeah, for 50000 Rich will stand there with a hose and hose people down. <laughs> That's what is, what is the, the right price? Yeah. <laughs> what does everybody think about this? What are your thoughts? I mean, we can, we can table this until we speak to well, Nancy. Is there a way to, is there, you know, is there a chance this can get, that there's grant money for this? There is grant I mean, that's available that will pay for the 100,000, but not the 15,000. Yeah, we still got to come out of pocket for the 15 grand. Right. So, I mean, if you're going to do the 15 grand, you might as well do the 100. The engineering. I, mean, I think it's kind of, I think we need to research this a little bit more. Well, does this include keeping the existing structure and just redoing all the filtration and pumping and everything? Or is this a new structure? No, this is just to meet the, create a new filter, uh, filtering system and separate from the larger pool. Because remember we had the problem with the leaks yeah. because the pools- I just want to be clear. It doesn't have any, it's nothing to do with the structure. It's just, and the structure is fine. It just needs a uh, new pumps and filtration and whatever. It says design new wading pool, including skimmers, main drains, new filtration system and surrounding concrete deck. Marcus, we, we need an engineering firm for this to, because a lot of pool pool design companies have their own engineering firms. Uh, if we went out to bid with this, they could bring in somebody in themselves. Uh, you yeah, pool, but a pool I, contract, I, you mean? But yeah. some, yeah, but some had the idea is to have somebody, somebody have to do the scope of work to do this. I get it, but they can't, yeah. their, their own personal engineers can't do the scope. Uh, I've never gone out unless you're going to give them the, the job at the end of the day. I don't know how that will work, to be honest with you. Okay. But, because if we go into if we go into the preliminary design, for example, and we su submit this to the Department of Health, and let's say the the work is three hundred thousand dollars, the board can just kill the project at that point and not move any further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Mayor? I think, honestly, with the questions that have come up, um, I think we need to table this until we have more information. Uh, I think if we spend the hundred thousand, the use of this this pool. I mean, I've gone to the pool a lot in August, and it's it's very few people. Yeah. And and to pay, and we're not guaranteed with a a, a grant for this, 
And we still spend 15,000 up front for something that I'm really, I, I can't believe, I don't think you can have a camp person that's going to be less than five or six years old. And five or My, six year olds are not using that, that kind of a, uh, uh, it's a baby pool. May I, may, I suggest, may I suggest this to the board, since this is the only voting meeting until October, and Nancy is going to be here for the workshop uh, at in September. Um, if the board's willing to agree to this at this meeting, subject to the discussion you're going to have with Nancy to tell how many children's being affected by this stuff like that, and then we I can just not approve anything. And but at least at least we're ready to go with this in case the board wants to move forward, or unless you want to wait till October. The concern is talking to Bell. It takes the Westchester County Department of Health months and months to review any kind of application. So it might, might not, this might might delay the whole project to another year, and then Nancy can explain what the effects are. So I just run out there just to move this forward since you only meet once a month, and then listen mm. to Nancy in September. The only problem. Huh? It's a very short span of time. Our next board, our next workshop is September 28th, and then the, the meeting is that next Tuesday, I believe. Yep. So we just oh, so we just delay this another month if that yeah, you know, yeah, if we want to get more information. The question is to find out what the what the age group is. It, do, do we accept children in the camp under five? I don't think oh, so. Yeah. No. I no. I I not, I'm not sure either. All I know is from Nancy saying is that that she has to spend more more money on counselors to review the, the younger kids going into the pool because the pool is deeper. So therefore there's more staff she needs to hire for, for, the, to, for yeah. those children. Is that, That's is my understanding. Pool, spend $100,000 on, on yeah. earning five yeah. kids going into the brand. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what, that she has to give you, I asked her to provide you guys with that analysis and the numbers. Mm. Okay, so as, we're, not, we're not ready to vote on this. All right, that's fine. So we're going to table the waiting pool we'll table it. in the last okay. couple of years? Not last, last year, last year, yeah. uh, last year, no. And this year it was open? And this year, no. We shut it down to keep the big pool open. So it hasn't been open for a couple of years. Two, two years. Yeah. I mean, I remember when my son was little taking him over there and I could picture, you know, lots of kids running around in that waiting pool, but I'm talking about 20 years ago. I don't know what kind of use it was getting when it was yeah. still open. Uh, so, um, you know, I'd like to get some other input maybe and hear from Nancy. All right. Next workshop, is that what we're saying? Yep, we're gonna discuss it at that. We're also gonna discuss at the workshop, okay? Okay. Perfect. Okay, um, so a motion to renew the planning consultant Hardesty and Hanover for the same hourly rate for 2021 and 2022. Uh, there's no increase in their fee. Um, and there just was uh, just somehow got away from us here. So, um, and we're gonna have everyone got the uh, printout on that. Also um, the services that they will provide, um, their fees, et cetera, et cetera. So same as same as we've we've had. So on a motion to um, to to renew the planning consultant. Make a motion. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. And a question. Yeah. What could you just explain again what these what these people are doing for us? This is our planning. So at one time for the. Oh gosh, I can't think of the company that we used to F have. F P Clark. F.P. Clark for years. So these are our planners. So they come to our planning board meetings um, and they, they're they going to help us with um, the Indian Point property if the board so votes that way to uh, have them. Um, so they're a planning company. Did F.P. Clark merge into Hanover? Yeah, Mercy I think Hanover, Hanover or did... Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's still a lot of the same people from F.P. Clark are, are with this company. Yeah, is it basically the same company under a new ownership or is it, uh, was it a couple of companies that merged? Do we know? I think Hanover mer um, I bought out F.P. Clark, if I'm not they bought mistaken. bought them out? That was my okay. understanding. Yeah. So services here, uh, Rich, that a continued planning advisor service re related to the review and processing of subdivisions, site plans, special permits, variances, rezonings, and other applications, 
and special planning, zoning, traffic, or environmental matters initiated at the request of the village. So we only pay them when they actually work, is that it? This is not yeah. a, a yearly contract, is it? Well, it shows the hourly rate for the yeah, different- Yeah, I mean- it, that, That's correct, that's yeah. correct. Nick, that, Rich, that's correct. Whenever okay. they uh, review right. any kind of application, it's the time they get paid. Right, okay. Uh, upon the request of the planning and zoning board chairman, they will attend the meetings at their request. That's and correct. For uh, the new determination that was made by the uh, village board several months ago, any of their services, whether it's residential or commercial, are back charged to them. Because whenever a, uh, a uh, applicant comes before them, we require them to put up escrow based on the amount of effort that the project will be required. So the majority now uh, will be uh, charged to the applicant, where before only the commercial applicants were being charged and the residential applicants were being afforded the services. So the majority of the work that they will be performing will not come directly from village funds, even though you will see a disbursement of village funds because we pay the bill. However, we take, we're like an intermediary between the, uh, the okay. escrow fund. I got you, yeah, okay, thank you for the explanation. Okay, good, all right, so, oh my gosh. So on a motion to renew the planning consultant, and we, we've done that, we, and I said on a question, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, opposed? In favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. We got that done. Sorry. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye is right. Okay, consider a motion to authorize the village attorney to prepare a resolution other documents regarding the firefighter exemption uh, program. And Nick, I know you weren't at the last meeting. So all I'm looking for is consensus from the board that we, sh we should have Stephanie move forward and um, and Stephanie wasn't with us last time. So I just want a consensus from the board that they're interested in moving this forward uh, for the fire uh, firefighter exemption program. Yeah, I thought it was relatively in, in, insignificant, insignificant amount of money. And, and they, these are volunteers and uh, it's a good way to, uh, to reward them. Okay, I think, it's, uh, I think it's a good thing too. And uh, uh, was there a question uh, was the question answered uh, regarding if the firefighter uh, passes away, uh, what are the conditions for the spouse collecting that, uh, that getting that uh, tax break? Hey, Nick. Yeah. So, so under the law, you can also allow for that. Um, so you can do one, two, or three, and I'll send you a memo on it because the language is pretty specific. You can continue okay. it on for the deceased firefighter as long as he had 20 years of service, I believe it is, but I'll send you a memo on it. Okay. And most most communities that have done this have also um, allowed for the deceased's spouse, so long as okay. the deceased was a member yep. for 20 years or whatever the number is, but I'll explain it to you. You can do one, yep. two, adopt them all, whatever you want to do. Okay. okay. But I'm generally, I mean, I'm in favor of it. I think, uh, as Rich said, these are our volunteers and they're very important to us. And uh, whatever, you know, there's a there are a handful of small things we can do to make it uh, a little bit better for them. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's a good thing to do. Okay, so, all right. On a motion to authorize the village attorney to prepare a resolution and any other documents regarding the firefighter exemption program. Well, why don't we change that instead of the resolution, why don't we change okay. that to be doing some research and sending you a memo on how you'd like to proceed. All right, so then we should table this this uh, resolution also, and then you will do a memo for us, and uh, we can discuss it once again at the workshop in se in um, September. Yeah, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, Senator Harkum right now has in front of uh, in Albany, um, he's amending the Real Property Tax Law four sixty six D, which deals with Westchester County villages towns, um, because it used to say something like you know, with a population of 900,000 to 979, you know, 100,000. And they're, they're, they're seeking to strike that. And that is where I got a little hung up. I mean, I didn't do all that much research, but I did do some and I thought, wait a minute, what do I have to go to the last census? So they're updating that right now, which is a good thing. Um, but I just wanted you to know that because that should be voted on shortly. Okay. And probably pass and should. 
because I think other communities have just ignored it and said, well, you know, that's ridiculous. But anyway, so I will get a memo to you. I'll show you a copy of that section of the law. Um, and when I read it, what it says is by resolution, local law, or ordinance, and that has not seemingly changed. And so that would be up to you as well. But I'll so get do, we need a, do we need a public hearing to put it on a ballot? If you put it on the ballot, yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have, well, I don't think it has to go on the ballot, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, the section I'm talking about now, there is a, a little blip in that when you look at the assessor's manual, it says a different section um, you'd have to do it by proposition, which would be to put it on the ballot. But I'm still not sure that if you do one, it doesn't cancel the other. Um, and I wanna make really clear about that before I send you the memo so that we're not hurting anybody. Because if I remember correctly, the assessor said the other last uh, month that we had to put it on yeah, the ballot. Yeah, there's something in the assessor's manual, about but it. it's nowhere else that I can find, including the reference on the assessor's manual, which uh, leads back to the Real Property Tax Law 466D. And Tom is away this week because I, you know, I gave him a call because I would like to know, I don't see it anywhere else. And the other communities that I've looked up that have passed this by local law, I've not seemingly seen that either. There may be some differences between a village and a town, but I would like to talk to him a bit more and he's away. So I'm- But even if we have a, even if we have a local law, yeah, we're gonna need a- Yeah, or here. you could do it by resolution as well, which is really odd in the law or by ordinance. So, um, so I'm still doing the research on it, but if you do it by local law, yep. If you put it on the ballot, yep. If you do it by resolution, yes, no. All right, so we need to do a little <laughs> more research on that. Yeah, before we can move forward. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So we're going to table that. Okay. All right. Um, we're, I'm going to make a motion to retain the services of Labat, Balkan, Colavita, and Contini LLP as special counsel. Um, the village has gotten a notice of claim for allegations that go back to 1992, and we need to retain special counsel. So on a motion to retain the special counsel of El Abad, Balkan, Colavita, and Contini LLP. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, on a question. What's the budget? Well, we have to defend the village. That's that's the whole problem. Like we we have to, you know, it's one of those things we can't just say, uh, you know, never mind. Since we got the notice. Well, we, we, we have we have to know how much we, we want to allocate before we decide to capitulate. You know what I mean? And under what fund would this be coming out of? Do we have a, a budget line for this types of uh, litigation or not? I believe, Marcus, we have a, a special uh, a fund um, in the budget for uh, special counsel. Yeah, we have some money set aside for that. So we, if we go over that amount of money, we're going to have to transfer out a contingency or fund balance or something. But uh, as we get close to that number, I'll let the board know. And then we can have an, another meeting to discuss whether, whether additional funds will be coming from. But by then, hopefully, special counsel will have a discussion with the board to give you their insight in regards to maybe they could give you some clarification in regards to how much they think it's going to cost to defend or where we stand at that point. So what's that number you're talking about? I, I, I got to pull out the budget. I don't have it. I have to pull out the budget. I'll email the board. And I didn't, I don't remember if we got a contract. What's his hourly rate? Because uh, everybody has a different matrix for mm -hmm. you know, research, legal, uh, you know, the clerk, the primary, the secondary attorneys. Well, yeah, he does. Break it up? He does. Ste he Stephanie sent an email out to the board, I believe, a some couple of days ago with the. It's, it's the engagement letter you're talking about. What it says, Sean, is, um, which isn't always all that helpful, 275 for um, services performed by partners and of council attorneys, um, 230 for services performed by associates of the firm, and 100 per hour for services performed by paralegals. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's awfully cheap. Why is it so low? Yeah, I don't know. And they do. What's interesting about them, I spoke to the partner um, who's, who gave us the, um, for about an hour, um, who gave us the engagement letter. And what's interesting about him is, is Zurich is who disclaimed on this one. Um, and they work with them and against them often and are very familiar with their 
um, attorneys. And so he and I haven't gotten into a large discussion, but we're going to, um, because in my opinion, this might be really right for a motion to dismiss. And he was thinking the same thing. In that case, it would go rather quickly, but those are his hours. I mean, that's what he said. Those are his hours. Yeah, I mean, the his, reason sorry, not very his, reasonable. His, his fees per hour. Right. Who who's who's defending the other uh, who's defending the other uh, defendants? Oh, the the uh, town and the school district. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is there a but, reason why we couldn't join join them? We joined them in other things. Why can't we join them in defense? Well, because their position is this is all us and nothing to do with them. So they're going to seek to who's get out position? rather quickly. Who's, whose position is that? The school well, district. The town of Cortland's position is. Oh. They didn't run this, so they were sued as well. So did the school district. My understanding is that this was the village of Buchanan had some sort of wreck. Um, yeah. Yes, we did. And Stephanie, so did we have to go into executive session. Are we? Are we? No. Okay. No. Okay. All right. No. Hey, I just I find think, it interesting. I think people should know. I I just find it interesting that the school district and the town of Cortland are willing to work with us on other projects, but when it comes to spending money on defense of ourselves, they abandon us like we had the plague. Which is why we should have abandoned them long before, but that's just that's just my opinion. Well, but, uh, is, so did, you Stephanie, have did to you... really understand all the circumstances before you can actually say that. You I know? understand. Um, I know. That's all you know. I'm yeah. saying about that. Stephanie, did you send out the? Uh, I, I don't remember getting that uh, synopsis. Did, did, could you send that out again? I'll, I'll check my emails, but sure, it would have said. Oh, yeah, it's an engagement letter. It's four engagement pages. letter. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty clear. And he made it really clear that he'll keep me um, updated. There's also, well, that should be an executive session. There's another avenue we might take, but but I don't want to say that publicly. So maybe an executive no. session, we can go through it a little bit more. No, I understand. I, I just, you know, I always I'll like to know how much you. we're going to spend. Yeah, I'll send that out to you. Okay, thanks. Sure. Okay, so where did we end up? Uh, on a question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? No one. Okay, so the next, this is one that we added on. Um, I, the board will remember we uh, agreed to have a license agreement for 257 oh. Kate Avenue. Um, so moving forward, and this is the property that's right next to our park that we're gonna be redeveloping shortly. Um, so mo to move forward with this agreement, um, the village property needs to be surveyed. An escrow account from 257 will have to be set up. Um, and uh, that, uh, so I'm going to make a motion to retain the services of Matthew Noviello to perform a survey of the village property that has been encroached um, by the property owner of 257 Tate. Can I just interrupt for a minute? Sure, yes. Um, this is how this has gone. So the owners of 257 Tate hired counsel who wrote to me and sent me um, a draft license agreement for on behalf of her client. And you know, I'm not gonna comment on much of it because I rejected it. But what we've been going back and forth with was that um, the client, her client needs to put in an escrow so that the village can um, survey your property for a meets and bounds description because for a licensing agreement, you need meets and bounds, you have to be really clear. And, and they, they really um, balked at that, and they offered that they'd have their own surveyor do it. Um, my understanding is the latest email I got from the attorney was, you're right, I'm going to tell my client to, to put in the escrow. So, Marcus, has she done that? As of tonight, no, but my last email with her was, to, I guess they were away on vacation, and okay. she said, and she didn't tell me specifically, what, so what she said, when I return, from my vacation, we'll be, we'll be releasing a check. That's the way she left it. All right, good. So then moving forward, once we get that, then Teresa, sorry to interrupt you, but oh, we'll no, have please. it surveyed. And then I, I just want to know before I continue on on this, was it, it was the consensus of the board that you wish to grant a license agreement, presuming we know what we own and what we're licensing, um, before I keep going with this attorney. Is that true? I didn't know we ever came to that conclusion. Well, yeah, I didn't no. either. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> That's no. Remember, we had the discussion on her parking there, and that we came up with uh, some type of a fee for her to park there. Um, so we just have to figure out. Yeah, we. I forget what it was. A couple of months ago, we had that discussion. Oh no, we had a big discussion on different yeah. options, and uh -huh. you know, there was a 
a little issue with the type of construction that the wall was made out of. And uh, before we came up with a course of action, we wanted to ensure that not only was the wall structurally sound, but the fill behind that wall was structurally sound. You know, there was a telephone pole that was in the middle mm -hmm. of that. And uh, there were other issues that were involved and I didn't know that we were actually gonna leave it as is with no contingencies on it. Uh, unless this is the first step is, is having the survey and then we go into the, uh, the details to protect the village. Is the wall is the wall on village property or is it? No, it's on no. the neighbor's property, I no. think. Yeah, it's on the neighbor's property. Okay, so then in my opinion, that's a neighbor problem and probably a building inspector problem versus letting her park on your property because if 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 she if she did that right on the neighbor's property i mean you know we don't it, usually it, take that on like if somebody you know encroaches on your property the village isn't really going to get involved in defending that or prosecuting that or well the building inspector would no, so has he looked has he looked at that yes see? the the project it was one in the same all right oh. it it it's two adjoining pieces of property. One is the village and one is the neighbor and they improved both of them and are parking cars on both of them. So it is a continuous development between the two properties. So we we wanted to, and we didn't really know the, the line of demarcation. We knew that wall was there a long time ago. There were a lot of things that went into it and we can't just license half of a driveway, you know, and tell them to take it out and go talk to the, go, talk, go sue the, uh, the neighbor to get the other half taken off. You know? No, 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 no. But I thought the wall wasn't on any part of the village's triangular piece of property, and we don't know that because we don't have a meets and bounds, which is why yeah. we asked for escrow to, to do that. Yeah, but I, I think what they wanted to do was to park like not like uh, one, you know, one and then one behind the other, which would then at that point, my understanding was, would bring them on to the village property. So oh, they definitely want to be on the village property because they handed me a license agreement, which basically, you know. Let them use the edge it. of their yes. driveway, if we look at that, if we could look at, they, they did already have a survey of their own. I think if we look at that survey, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Marcus, um, it's at that end of their driveway that they would encroach on the village property. That was uh, my No, yeah, yeah, no. What they have, a, the entire back of the property, if you look from White Street onto it, that's a little wall and the, stair, and the stairs, from that wall to White Street, <coughs> it looks like it's, it's village property. That's what we need to meet. They don't have any access from the back of their property to White Street. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, and half of that up to the telephone pole going east is the neighbor's property. That's correct. That's correct. So up, the, to, but, up to the part that was the village. Yeah, so correct. there's so a continuous that, part of that that is village and paved on top of the neighbor's property. Correct, and, 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 and Sean, to add, just to add more information for that, we've asked the next door neighbor to provide their survey as well, so we can identify where their property, where these people might cross on their property as well. Uh, and the wall, the building inspector has asked for engineering of that wall, which still, right. they said they're gonna provide that as well. So besides the part that we're talking about, the village property, there's a, a bunch of other issues that they're dealing with as well with the building department. Have we gotten the survey? Uh, I didn't no, mean to go off on a tangent on this. I know yes. it's kind of outside you, of the, yeah, Nick, the realm Nick, of this. Uh, yeah, group. Nick is showing with that, with Nick, with that you 10, see, yeah, with that 10 is. I don't know if you can that, see this, but that's their the property their, doesn't even reach White Street. That's their correct. property it's, it, ends it's, and the village right. property wraps around it. There. That's correct. You got it. Right. right there in that corner. Yep. So, so Teresa, they have no access to White Street. Where that 10 is, that's the end of their property that he shows in the map. So, so, so there's a whole bunch of issues. I'm just trying to, identify the village property and if I'm, when we know where the village property ends then the neighbor's property starts and that's another issue they have to deal with right okay. yeah so I, I don't think we're ready to write a licensing agreement until no, we no. come up with the plan <laughs> no. but i think we should just go with the survey uh, contingent upon the applicant uh, supplying us with an escrow fund all right so yeah we, and that's what we've said all right, so we got we got some things to uh, still continue discussion on. Okay, well, so we can gonna... we can approve this resolution contingent upon the establishment of an escrow fund. So as soon as they put it in, they we start doing surveys. But correct. That, yeah, that's yes. correct. That, that's what we're looking for. Correct. So, but then is the board now? You know, I'm, I'm listening to all the comments here. Is the board still willing to go forward with that to do a licensing? 
I don't think we should discuss licensing now. I think we should find a meets and bounds and then discuss what we want to do with it. Yeah. As right. long as it's not going to impact any village resources, any village funds, and the okay. applicant's going to pay for it, then we could decide once we know what exactly we're talking about. What they can do and what they can't yeah. do. I don't think Stephanie should be spending any time going with licensing agreements until we make <laughs> that determination. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you because okay that I, stuff? I'm just thinking of the conversation yeah. that we yeah. had a couple of months ago about this and how there was... Um, I'll have to look back um, and how there was a fee that was come up. Uh, there was a fee that was agreed on for them to do that, but the, the horse got way before the cart here. So, um, so we're going to make a, a motion. Um, where did I go again? So we're going to make a motion um, for um, da, 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 an escrow account be set up from 257. Um, and the company that will be doing the survey is uh, Matthew Nobiello for the, um, the survey. And that's only for the meets and bounds for the village piece of property, right, Marcus? 100% correct. Okay, good. Meets and bounds for village property. Okay. Yep. All right. So can I, I did the motion. Second. A motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we can get this, get that resolved. Okay. So the other thing that I did add on to the agenda and um, was the uh, Siemens agreement. Um, the village was interested in doing a study on how to save money, upgrading our infrastructure, improve energy efficiency, lighting efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. And we originally hoped the savings would outweigh the cost. So we, um, Siemens moved forward to do the study, which we now currently have all of the information. We got back, you know, we got the backup and the studies. And so now they are looking to get paid. Um, and um, we, we at, you know, we, we don't, things changed and our, our financial situation changed. I know the school had, um, I had spoken to the school about Siemens. They were very pleased with what they did for the school with their upgrades. But um, I think moving forward at this time until we can see where we are with um, the cessation fund, where exactly we are with um, the pilot agreement, which is, you know, that has to be hammered out yet. Um, so I, I think for now, we do owe them money for the services that they did, the work that they did. Um, and they're looking to get paid, of course. And um, so I would like to, um, you know, make a motion to pay Siemens for the work that they've done that we can still use going forward if um, we decide to do certain projects. One of the things I want to tell you that will come out of there, and we've had this discussion, um, is the uh, heating system at Village Hall. Um, we need to do the heating system like for this, this winter. It's, it's on its last leg. God knows how old that is. It's probably from 1976. But, um, and we were fortunate enough, well, when I renegotiated with Entergy for that extra year, and we've discussed this before, um, that we have $135,000 from the Entergy agreement that we are going to use to replace the furnace. So um, the Siemens has been working with us. Um, they have given us a 20% discount. So for all of the work that they've done and the reports, Marcus, if you could please forward the reports to the board, um, we've received a 20% 20, 20 discount. So the fee that we would have to pay would be 55,818. And just remember going forward, that work has already been done. So we can pick and choose what projects we'd like to do going forward. Um, we can continue to look for grants. For some of the projects, there are grants available. So um, that's what I have for this evening. So on a motion to- Don't move. Pay Siemens the $55,818 for services rendered. So move second. Second. All in favor? On the question? Sure, absolutely. 
Okay, this was part of the uh, September 4th, res uh, 2018 resolution that authorized the expenditure of $640,000 for these energy performance contracts. Uh, when I had made this a, an issue during the campaign, I was told that I was lying. Um, Trustee Function's letter to the editor in March of 2021 said, the board did not authorize $640,000 for energy performance contracts. As you can see right now, you absolutely did. I did not, that's not there. You know what, I, right I, would, like, I would like to, I, I don't have the, the thing in front of me because I think it was, I see, I can't, I can't comment on that until I see something uh, other than that. I don't, I can't comment on that at this time, but you know what, we're at a point now, you, we need to make a decision. You know what, we have to pay these people, either we're gonna pay them or we're not gonna pay them, then we're gonna be in a different situation. So The other, the other question I have is uh -huh. that bill from Siemens, that was $69,765, which is currently on an invoice sitting on a desk in Village Hall, okay. was given to the village in January of 2021. None of this was ever budgeted for. We knew we had an 11% uh, expense to that $640,000. And this was never discussed during the budget hearings. And I was told on several occasions that I was not only misleading, but being incorrect in my assumption that the resolution that specifically states $640,000 was authorized that I was wrong. So contingent upon the vote on this, I would like a resolution revoking the mayor's authorization to expend the remainder of those funds because there has never been a resolution that says that we don't, uh, that we cannot spend those funds. We shouldn't be able to spend these funds unless they're budgeted for. The contract entered into by the mayor in, two th in May of 2019 Specific, specifically says that the contract should be null and void, would be null and void, if the village did not bond within a certain time frame. So I don't see how we're even liable for the engineering services because the terms and conditions set forth in the 2019 agreement were not fulfilled by the village creating a bond for the, the, the amount set forth in the resolutions. So, you know, well, we can't have an open-ended paycheck, an open-ended checkbook, of almost six hundred thousand dollars, with 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 no budget. There was this was a financing package. This was what we were were doing. The savings, and if you see the report, the savings show that a lot of it was paying for itself. We were not putting out six hundred forty thousand dollars. It was that amount of work. So now you're going to take six forty and remove one hundred thirty five thousand dollars. For the um, for the uh, the heating system at Village Hall, so we're at a point now where we owe them for money of services that they provided. We don't have to go forward. The board can decide if financially the village has finds more money or more grants or something. We can go forward. So by paying them, that stops that right there. We don't have to go forward any further. We're, tonight, we're just paying them for the services that they rendered. You know, there was a, the contract was with Siemens, and um, at a certain point, in order for them to continue with their with their assessments and studies, we had to authorize that. At the time, it seemed like a good idea because uh, they would be financing all of the work, and the village did need a lot of work to, as far as a boiler. Uh, some energy efficiency upgrades like LED lighting at the village hall, things like this. So it seemed like a good package. And the, and the thing that I think I remember being the appeal to me was that Siemens would finance all of this work. And so we wouldn't have to come up with a big amount of money all at once. But unfortunately, in order for them to continue with their studies, our contract with them uh, is what led to that bill for 69,000. Um, and um, it would have been nice if we could have gotten more than a 20% discount, but if that's the best we could do, I don't think we have a choice but to uh, to make that payment. Otherwise, we're going to have some litigation. They're going to, you know, there's probably going to be some well, litigation. Look, let me read to you Article One of the contract signed on May 23rd, 2019. It says yep. payment for scope of work, and this isn't the entire paragraph, but 
says the funding of the escrow account in an amount equal to or greater than the price stated in Article 1.1 above shall be a condition precedent to Siemens obligation to perform or to continue the performance of work. If the escrow account is not funded within days of the execution of this agreement, this agreement shall be null, null and void. The day of funding period may be extended as mutually agreed upon in writing by the parties. That is dated May 23rd, 2019. The bill well, that we're discussing paying has an invoice date of January 8th, 2020. Okay, so, so I think we should never even started work. Yeah, I understand. I would love it if there was a way out of this whole thing, but but the way out uh, is to follow the to, agreement that you guys signed. Yeah, but there might be some other print that says uh, if yes. that work is null and void, that we're still liable for the engineering services in doing all of the assessments they did. So. so when it says uh, that, can we it, can we go through some of the rest of the fine print in that contract? It, and... it, yeah, there is. There's there's a there's a clause in there, um, and they made it pretty clear that if we once we signed, if we decided not to move forward after we committed, we would be responsible for paying for their time, their studies, and the material. Absolutely. It, the the remainder of the paragraph says in the event that the agreement becomes null and void as described in this paragraph and client has previously authorized Siemens to proceed with the work, the client shall be ob obligated to reimburse Siemens either for work performed to date or the work specifically authorized by the client. Since no escrow account was ever set up, work should never have been performed because there's no way they did $70,000 work within days the weekend before Memorial Day. They didn't just do this in a weekend. This this, no, this, this was ongoing for a while. I, I well, it started in actually it started in November of 2017 hmm. with a resolution, and then it's continued on September 4th, 2018, when the six hundred forty thousand dollars was authorized to be expended. Then the contract was executed on May 23rd, 2019, which required the establishment of the escrow account equal to or greater than the contract, which was $640,000, which was to be set up within days of execution of said contract. But, you know, the, the, it's, it's all pretty black and white. And this invoice has been sitting down there since January. Why wasn't this even budgeted? You knew. I didn't know it until I started doing research. Because we were, budget for I think we were negotiating and trying to get out of it. And I think that the legally we had no other recourse. So maybe we need to, I don't know, uh, uh, Stephanie, do you think we need to, uh, that there's some text in the agreement that would clarify this for Sean? Even if we have to pay it. When you guys authorized the expenditure of $640,000 in 2018, there should have been some allocation in one of the three uh, uh, preceding budgets. Sean, that was the scope of the work, the $640,000. We were able to pick what we wanted to do going forward. And they were doing all these cost estimates to see what the payback of whatever we were doing would happen over 10 years, 20 years, I believe it was. So it wasn't that we were we were definitely doing the 640, but there was an agreement if we decided not to go forward that we would have yeah. to pay to cover the expenses for the, the, the actual services that they're provided. Once we pay these services, that's it. We are not obligated to go further with them. That's the end. Or Unless the board down the road decides that they want to continue or they're looking at doing these kind of things and then they can come back but all the groundwork all that stuff is done now and that's what we're paying for we don't have to go there forward. there is currently nothing there is currently no legislation or resolutions that prevents the village from spending up to six hundred and forty thousand dollars on energy performance contracts the resolution is specific is very specific it says the village now tends to authorize the negotiation, execution, delivery of one or more performance contracts as related to lease purchase agreements in an aggregate original principal amount not to exceed $640,000 plus reasonable costs and insurances in connection therewith. 
So there's still legislation open on the books that allows the expenditure of $640,000 that I think this loophole should be closed. We have to have a resolution that rescinds the authorization for this unbudgeted expenditure. All right, Sean, we're gonna get you those reports, you and Anthony, we're gonna get you those reports. Um, I, we are going to make a motion to pay for what we've, uh, the services that were provided. And then if we have to make a resolution at a later point to close that down, then that therefore we will. Can anybody answer why, when we knew we incurred this $69,000 liability in January, why it was never brought up in any of the budget hearings that we had this potential liability? Can any of the previously sitting board members tell me why that was an overlook? Because as soon as I sat down in April to go over the bills, that bill was mm -hmm. in there and it had a sticky attached to it that says, do not pay. Because we were so that voucher has been sitting there for a long we were time. Trying to negotiate and why didn't anybody that bring we're it not going to pay the sixty-nine thousand. We were trying to negotiate something with Siemens. So we were looking for any legal, any way out of it, and uh, apparently, we're boxed in by some contractual stuff that uh, was, I guess, uh, uh, Kevin, the previous administrator, came to us and asked us if we wanted to proceed. I only remember that. Um, the primary appeal to me was, aside from these were things that we wanted to do, was the fact that Siemens would finance it so we would not have to come up. There was, they, they, their contention was that our energy savings would pay mm -hmm. for, the, um, for the whole project over time and, they were, and the financing would be extended out long enough to be neutralized by the energy savings. Um, and um, I'd have to go back and look through the paperwork, uh, but I believe, um, you know, just because of the financing aspect of it, it was appealing to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think even though we've decided to take some of these improvements piecemeal and try to do them uh, as we can and as we need to, um, I, you know, I, I, I think that the issue was that there was some contractual component requiring us to, after a certain point, up to a certain point, uh, there was no le financial legal obligation, but after a certain point that we authorized, um, unfortunately in retrospect, but we authorized it, we were then legally obligated to pay the engineering fees incurred by Siemens up to that point. Listen, I, I understand exactly what you're saying and it is not clear in there. However, it says if the escrow account is not funded within days of execution of the agreement, it is null and void. So where it says yeah. days, there's no way to incur that amount of engineering work within days. Within no, 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 days. that engineering, that was their studies that was going on from I'll day read. one, uh, I, you know, not just in those days. That, that was the prep work that they did to get us to that point of the $640,000 figure. Right. So you mean to tell me that the village authorized that expenditure before of having an analysis? You guys were willing to no, spend seventy thousand dollars to have an analysis for? We had the analysis. We thought it was wise to proceed, but um, you know, as our finances changed, and uh, we thought we might be able to do certain individual components and not do the whole six hundred forty. Uh, you know, we we rethought it, and we're trying to get out of it, which is why we didn't pay that. We were trying to look for recourse on those engineering fees. Um, I don't have the fine print in front of me, but I believe we are legally obligated by contract for those fees. The service is rendered, correct. What, well, what, what was the previous contract? Because this contract is May of 2019. Um, you know what, there we're, a different gonna contract? we're gonna continue the conversation, but not everybody has all the documentation in front of them. So I'm more than happy to have the conversation with you, but everyone doesn't have the documentation. Marcus sent it out a couple of months ago. Okay, but do they have it in front of them tonight? No, well, they it's, don't. It's, I so believe it's a trustee's responsibility. To, we I think it's the trustee's responsibility to have the documents so, for expenditure of funds. So tonight, what we're going to do, once again, I'm going to make a motion to pay the services that were rendered from Siemens to close that chapter and we don't have to go forward and we will get that information to you also. So 
you know what, we had all intentions of doing this. It was a good thing for the village. There were savings that were going to be incurred. It was a financing option for the village instead of expending all that money. And the payback was supposed to come, for example, over 20 years. So it, it would look like a good situation. We were going into doing it. And then, you know, our finances, everything changed. And then we said, whoa, you know, so we were looking at to doing something positive for the village. So we will continue the conversation. But this evening, I'd like to make a motion so that we can pay the amount to Siemens that we owe for the services that were rendered. And the amount once again is, hold on. $55,818. So on a motion. No move. Second. Second. I have a question, but I have a question. Okay, on a question, go just ahead. To, just, just to get down to brass tacks, I'll address the question to Stephanie, who has uh, reviewed this and has been uh, uh, doing the contact, contact work with them. Do we have any recourse here? I mean, we could litigate it if that's what you'd want, but it'll be expensive. Okay, so oh, what, what, I think they made it. I think they made it really clear several times that once we got beyond that point, and what we were signing was to say you can jump out anytime you want. I mean, they got bond, bond counsel involved. There was some. There was some real work done there, um, and then we decided to huh. not do that. And that's really huh. the extent of my involvement in it at that time, mm -hmm. as we all know now. Um, and so. Huh. Sure, you could litigate anything you want. Okay, but I mean, oh, what is other, short of litigation, uh, the contract and uh, the pro whatever we have authorized uh, them to proceed on requires us to make this payment now or face litigation. That's correct. Yeah, so you know, what, what, it, what it seems to me is that after the September 4th, 2018 resolution, which authorized the expenditure of the $640,000, Somebody might have contacted Siemens and said, do the research, let us know what we want. And then when they came back with the analysis, then uh, the mayor signed a contract on May 23rd, 2019. And then when they wanted the escrow money to be deposited, the village probably said, hey, we don't have the escrow money. They said, well, what are you talking about? And you said, well, we don't think we want to go forward. And that's when everything stopped. So this that's, seems like the logical uh, course of events. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Can one of the previous board members who were involved with this entire process tell me if that's the way you remember it? Uh, yes, we had the right to not proceed with the work, but we were obligated to pay the uh, legal and engineering so, uh, fees that went into the uh, building of their report and assessing all the different village needs. See, the clause that you're mentioning was in the contract from 2019. The stipulations was I'm talking about were the authorization for expenditure in 2018. So that I, that's probably where the lapse is because no work should have taken place until a contract was signed with the terms and conditions of payment, okay? That's where I believe the error was made. But I might, I'm probably, I'm sure you guys won't agree with me on that, but that's where it is. And we still have the open agreement the open resolution authorizing that expenditure, which I believe we should have a resolution rescinding the authorization for the expenditure of over 600,000 of unbudgeted funds. And we should have that at the next, discuss it at the next workshop meeting and have legislation in October because there's no reason why you have to pay a company to tell you you need an oil burner, okay? You knew you needed it and the Siemens told you you're not, well, all right? <laughs> the report, there's a lot more to it. So the agreement that, that we've made with them allows the village to terminate with this payment. That's the end of it. So we don't move forward. If the village later on decides that they do want to move forward, then they can continue with it. But for now, if we, we make this payment, it, it terminates it. That's the end. We're moving on. So later on, I don't know, maybe somebody will donate $3 million to the village and the village goes, woohoo, yeah, I'd like to do that. And then they can. So... But right now we just didn't think it was wise to go forward with it. And why that gap was, is because we were trying to negotiate something. What were you trying to negotiate, Mayor? We were trying to negotiate the fee down, which we have by 20%. That's what we were trying to negotiate. This is, the, this is what these people, the services that they supplied. Sean, 
just like when you know you were looking at the sewer treatment plant when you in your time did you have to pay the engineer to do that no actually i didn't because it was given to us by the uh, county underneath their budgetary requirements for nineteen thousand dollars they supplied that survey free with the three different options from tom laurel of westchester county so it was free actually at the sewer treatment plant didn't we we, we spent a hell of a lot of money over there yeah, and yes, we we're, did. we're in the same boat so all right so any any marcus do you have any any um advice you'd like to give us stephanie do you have any advice you'd like to give us at this time i would just suggest that i think trustee murray might be right about uh, doing a resolution rescinding okay. the authorization we can just do to that. get it cleared up and off the books and so it's not an open-ended item that might you know you can spend it three years from now not that you would but it would clear it up and off the books okay and I can prepare that, you know, anytime. You okay, that'll be perfect. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, does the previous the previous administrator uh, employed by Siemens now? I mean, no. this is <laughs> did what? <laughs> Say that again. Is the previous uh, administrator employed by Siemens now? <laughs> That's what I thought you said. I mean, this is uh, for consulting. I'm not. I don't want anything to do with this, but I I see no way out of it. You know, yeah. it just, I feel like we need to pay this bill, but I, 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 I hate to agree to it. I know. Well, we're not doing yeah. a happy dance either. Consulting. But. You're getting consulting, consulted yeah. on whether or not you should change your oil burner, whether or not you should change your light bulbs. It, it's just, this, this just seems crazy. All right. So that's what I want Marcus to everybody, the reports, please send out to everybody so that they, they see what, you know what was worked on what their thoughts were what were their yeah yeah thoughts on well, I, I think anthony what? hit it on the head there it's unfortunate but uh you know i mean the from the previous administrator as it was explained i think it sounded it's it it seemed like it would be a, a good way to go but uh um you know we did give them the proceed uh, at a certain point it, the administrator came to us and said do we give them the authorization to proceed because up to now we're not obligated for anything if we give them the authorization to proceed authorization to proceed you will be liable for certain fees if you back out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the change in finances we've decided to back out but um you know all right you're on it's unfortunate unfortunate it sounded better at the time in retrospect it was a mistake i'm just glad that the the villages admitted that they actually did enter into this contract for the expenditure of these funds. I'm glad that they uh, have admitted that they authorized the resolution in 2018, as well as signed a contract in 2019. Contrary to trustees function letter to the editor, where it specifically states All right, that Sean, they did not Sean, authorize Sean, it. Sean, 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 let's stop with the I'm just bringing up the facts, I'm politics, sorry. Please, you know, Sean, uh, this village, we're, we're um, not, Bible and slander, or I take them serious. We're not in a good place here, Sean. We need to somehow learn to work together going forward. This bill and the first the next couple of years is teetering, okay? And the fighting going back and forth, I got you, I got you. No, no. We need to, from now on, focus on how this village is going to survive, how we're going to work together, how we're going to move the village forward. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't see this village surviving. I hope I'm wrong, but the constant fighting, what are we doing to save the village? Does anybody have those thoughts? How can we, we increase our tax base? Oh, hey, maybe we should talk about the development of Indian Point. Hey, that's a thought. You know what, what are the positive things that we need to focus on? This is not 1990, this is not the year 2000. The village is going through a transformation. And you know what? That's fine. If you want to play the political thing, I'm not feeding into that anymore. I choose to focus on positive things. I have a list of positive things that are happening here in the village. The focus, how are we going to survive? What do we need to do in the next couple of years? Because it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. I've asked Marcus after we get the money from the cessation fund, because we're not there, there's another ask we did. So we might be getting a little bit more. 
I've asked him to do a five-year projection. I'm hoping that opens some eyes. I'm hoping people go, oh my God. I'm hoping my board goes, oh my God, what can we do? What can we do? You know, so that's where I am. So I'm, I'm done with the political. I'm done with that. I, I just, I'm focusing on positive, productive things to move the village forward. So and I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Mayor. Uh, okay. You know, the first, the first step. That's where I'm for coming. Trust, the okay. first step okay. to communication is Absolutely. being honest I and factual. Like being honest. I not, like it. Not, not feeding on rumor and innuendo, not I putting misleading information and blatant lies out to I the public. I want us to have right. a better way to communicate, Sean. Sure, I absolutely. want us to be able to communicate. I want all five board members to be able to communicate without fear of retribution, bullying, attacking. That's not helping the village. I don't know how, I, I, I don't know what else to say. It's like, let's work together the village depends on it that's what it depends on otherwise we're not going to be a village anymore and whether i'm mayor or not that doesn't matter that's not my ultimate goal in life my goal is to try to get the village to the finish line and we all need to be focused on that that's the goal so yes this wasn't the best case scenario but we owe these people some money and we're going to pay them, I think. Let's see what the board decides on at this point. And if you and I wanna have an offline conversation on how perhaps we can communicate better, we can work better together, what goals we could focus on, I would love that. That would be super duper. I would be on board with that. But you know what? We're spinning our wheels here. We're not progressing forward. We're not, we're not helping the village. And you know what? That's all I'm here for. You know what? And I just, that's what I, I want to see the village survive. That is my number one priority. If it doesn't, it's not, it's not going to be because I decided to be negative and, and uh, you know, do political stuff. So let's figure out how we can all work together um, and let's move forward. So on a motion to approve the payment of $55,818, um, can I have a, a second, please? We had, we had the second in the question. Okay, and we did on a question, right? So all in favor, I will approve this expenditure even though I'm not happy. Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay, thank you. So let's move on because it's uh, getting late and we have some other stuff to discuss. So the justice court report for July, 2021, um, we all have that that's received and filed. I would just like to mention that uh, one of the courts bought in $2,000 and the other court bought in $1,398. Um, the next uh, report is the police report, July, 2021. Rich, if you'd like to go over anything with that, because I know you're, you're uh, the yeah, well, I might, you know, the uh, later, later. Sure, the highway report, July, 2021. Wastewater treatment plant, we have, everything is okay over there. Um, and the building department, a lot of permits, a lot of, they're, they're doing a lot of work on. Yeah, I got a question on that, uh, sure. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Uh, unless I'm in, in front of me, it looks like something called ISFSI pad plus cash transfer. It's fissy, pad. It's fissy Rich. Is energy. Sean knows where that is over there. It's yeah, but I did have a question on that, Mayor, because you guys had yeah. said that the building department is just trying to cover its costs. I was just wondering what uh, cost is going to cost $42,000 to pour a concrete pad? I guess there is some type of a formula that is given. It's based on the yeah. size of the project. And that's the way all building permits and inspections are based on mm -hmm. the size of the project. You know, that, that's how I just... Found a little odd. The asphyxia, uh, the applicant is at 450 Broadway, Rich, and the asphyxia is the uh, interim spent fuel storage. That's where, the, uh, pad. Spent fuel That's where you sits put all on the top. Cash. So they're they're building another pad. Oh, okay. Need Got another it. pad because I in total it. there'll be approximately 125 spent fuel casts on the pad. So 
Okay, so we've received the building department, Buchanan engine, structure fires. We had one, EMS assist, three, other emergency, two, mutual aid, four, and mutual aid received, one. Um, we have prosecutor's report. Um, thank you, Cindy, for, for printing out that out for us. So that, that kind of gets us up to date and um, it's kind of an executive session thing, but Sean, the uh, thing that you had mentioned that you would like to see happening is in progress. Uh, What's the, that? Uh, That's not the um, speaking uh, to the judge and all those issues. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, the, the one I was talking to Marcus about, the prosecutor's one. Well, okay. I'll bring that all up right. in my report. Uh, planning board minutes, July 15, 2021, received and filed attorney's report. Stephanie, do you have anything for us this evening? Uh, we have nothing in zoning. We have one matter <laughs> still in planning, okay. uh, which I think might be uh, being deemed abandoned shortly. Uh, I was going to bring up the 257 Tate license agreement issue. We've already discussed it. Okay. The only other thing I have is I think you all got the code, remember when we hired the company to go through our code and, and give us some suggestions or yes. whatever the agreement was. So I think we all got that email, it's a hundred pages. Um, I guess I kind of thought that they would be making a good amount of those changes um, for us or adding or yeah. subtracting or whatever they were gonna do, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And so if you weed through it like I did, well, I began to, um, there's section after section after section. Some is just old, hey, do you want to update it? Some of it's, oh, your fees aren't consistent. Why don't you change them all, make them consistent, whatever. So I'm wondering how you want to proceed. And I thought maybe, and this is not my place to do it, it's yours, but does do any of the board members want to jump in and help with some of these sections? Because, you know. I was, I was under the impression, Stephanie, that they were going to give us a draft legislation for our approval. Us too. I was too, and that's not what happened. And so I'm looking at this thinking, I can't possibly do a hundred pages and look up all these things in the next few months by myself. The good part the good part about having these recorded, so if that's what that lady said, that's we're gonna have to hold her feet to the fire because that's was the, yeah. that was the meeting of the month. That's what we all understood, so, yeah. That's, that's what I understood. And if that's, if that's what she said through our questioning, yeah. they're gonna have to do a pro bono because they they, they didn't uh, negotiate in good faith. All right, we need to go back to them. But yeah, because just to throw that at us and say, okay, here you go. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that that we need to. Uh, and, and don't take, you know, don't get me wrong. I'd certainly be willing to do some of the legal work behind it because, you know, laws have changed from stuff from the 1970s, but some of it, I mean, this is just so cumbersome. I'm not sure what we paid for. Yeah. I thought it was too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we'll have continued discussions on that and let's see where, where we can go with that. All right, um, and then we more. got 257 yeah. code and the attorney, and that's all I have, thanks. Okay, all right, administrator's report. Mr. Marcus, what do you have for us? Uh, a couple of quick things. Um, we discussed at the workshop, but since we um meeting here in public, hopefully get the information out to the public as well. Uh, Route 9A uh, sidewalks, Hopefully, I should be giving some um, a green light. Hopefully, this week or next week, to start the uh, start that project. The, the pavilion, we actually got full confirmation on Friday. We're good to go. Um, so the contractor has ordered materials. So hopefully, sometime in October, that work could be done. And and then we had a um, pre-construction meeting with the paving company. They should be starting in about two weeks to start paving. So that's a quick little report for the board and for the public. Okay, and Marcus, the pavilion was a $125,000 grant. And I think they said around October 18th. So um, I think the board remembers we allowed last year because of COVID um, and they supplied the insurance. We allowed the school to uh, use the pavilion and also the field so that the kids could be you know, further apart with the COVID, but you know, I, I had to say to the principal, principal that, you know, if he has filled out the requirements, he can use it until, you know, October 18th when they start. So I felt a little bad about that, but we, we can't have kids uh, under the pavilion um, with construction going on. So unfortunately we won't be able to, to help them out this year. And I think the construction finishes what, Jan in January sometime, Marcus? That's correct, that's the timeline. 
Okay, let's get it done. We've been waiting for this. Let's make it happen. Okay, what else do you have for us, Marcus? Anything? That, that's it for tonight, okay. thank you. Okay, all right. Okay, we'll start with Trustee Murray first. Um, Thanks. Uh, in reviewing the bills, we I was looking at the uh, PBA negotiator's bill, and he is, he's billed us $5,700 so far to do research. And uh, it's, I was just wondering, you know, the contract was only approved in, in March, and he still needed many, many hours, over 40 hours to uh, do research on our contract and researching other departments within uh, Westchester County. I, I thought that might be a little bit high, but uh, one thing that we haven't had so far was, I believe he was supposed to sit down with the trustees to discuss things that the trustees might want to have included in a contract, similar to what I had requested. And I had asked Marcus a couple of times if there was anything scheduled. So is anything scheduled, Marcus, for uh, uh, the negotiator to sit down with us before he goes and talks to the PBA? Or do they PBA no, have anything scheduled with them? No, no, not yet. That's what the, the research he was trying to gather, research, okay. and he could present to the board all that details that he found. So they tell you what um, is happening around in the, in the uh, county and yeah. in our area. So yeah, um, some, of the, some, of the things that we, some of the things we were billed for are like uh, $975 analyzed and compared health insurance contribution policies in different Westchester County police departments. Another $570 to analyze and compare uniform cleaning allowances. And uh, then compared the analysis for another $165. So I was just wondering, do you have any idea when he was going to sit down with us or when negotiations were going to start to take place? Uh, no, I can find out with him tomorrow. He was f just finished up the, re I don't know if he's completed his research yet. Okay. So I'll find out if it, his research has been completed, which I think he has been. And then I'll get some dates to get to the board for a special uh, executive session or advice from council that he can sit down with the board members and they tell you what he's found and what his suggestions are and then hear back from the board. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I remember over the last couple of months, I had asked for a, a court report similar to the court reports I used to receive when I was a trustee back in 2008, 2009. Uh, we used to have a list of adjudications and it continued up until 2014, uh, just so we could see how many things were being dismissed, how many things were being prosecuted. You know, it, it helps because the uh, village board, if I'm not mistaken, is has some type of responsibility with the court. I remember when we had the negative finding by the comptroller's office, uh, the village board was actually found at fault for not performing its, its uh, legal duties. I don't even remember what those legal duties were. And part of it was the actual court report. I don't think find, uh, seeing how much was actually uh, sent to the state constitutes a report. Uh, I, I really don't know. So I was just wondering if, if uh, we were going to get a court report. Uh, do you have a sample? You, Marcus, you had said you were going to look. Uh, some yeah, yes, uh, you, yes. You found the old reports the way we used to receive them? Uh, in fact, I couldn't find the old reports, but I did email the judge and the court okay. clerk. Uh, said that I would say the board would like to get those type of reports back. Uh, I sent it to them the day, the same day we spoke. I have not received a response. I'll send them a reminder email again asking for them to provide that report. If they, they don't even have to be in the same format as they used to be, they can redact the names because the previous reports didn't have names redacted. I, I don't think we need to know the people's names. We just need to know the, we, we need to know the activity or if, if we don't need to know the activity, forget about it. You know, I, I don't remember what the law said, and I don't remember what uh, precipitated the that type of reporting. Do you know, Stephanie? Sorry, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can certainly research it. Right. If, if it's not needed, we don't need it. Uh, I was wondering if there was any movement on the uh, secretary's position for the planning and zoning board. I, I know there was a vacancy, and uh, there were people who were going to be interviewed or people who had requested to come to the uh, to be employed? Is there any movement on that? Um, right now, Cindy and Sharon are taking that responsibility. Um, I have never seen anybody 
bring interest on it. I don't know what the board members have, but right I now the mayor has mentioned something along those okay. lines. Okay. Okay. So no, I I did not have anyone that was interested. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, you know, have the conversation with Cindy and Sharon if they're willing to continue that. If not, I'm sure there's professional um, professional organizations that you can find. Um, you know, to advertise to get a secretary for that. And it's gonna take them time to get up to speed. You know, uh, the really good thing about our previous um, secretary is she had, she had going back for years, she had, you know, a lot of information stored in her head and, you know, remembered a lot of stuff. So like I said, it's gonna take a new person some time to get up to speed. No, I understand. I just didn't know if, if, if that's the direction we were going to go in or whether we were going to replace Rosemary. I thought the direction we had talked about was uh, to replace Rosemary. Yeah, I think there was a discussion um, we had about that, and I, I can't remember. There was another board member that mentioned something, somebody that they thought they knew, and then I, I didn't hear any more. Okay. Um, so we're not actively pursuing a secretary's position for the planning and zoning board. I guess Cindy and Sharon have agreed to take on those duties. Okay, are they gonna be uh, compensated differently for that or should, should we uh, increase their pay for, because Rose, Rosemary was getting paid a couple hundred dollars per meeting. Mm -hmm. And I know there was a previous agreement years ago that she, she would be paid by hourly for the extra. I wouldn't want them to be doing extra extra oh, no. work without being compensated yeah, or, no. you know, because it, yeah uh, uh, Sean um, I think we discussed it uh, some time ago and since they're doing the additional work the monthly the uh, amount that um, Rosemary was getting was $200 a meeting Sharon and Cindy are splitting up depending on how much work they're doing for which meeting so they're splitting the $200 between themselves well it's $400 $200 a meeting so it's $400 Two, a month. yeah $200 a meeting that's correct yes okay thanks uh, the other thing, when we were talking about the court report, I was wondering uh, if any violations were written against Con Edison for their construction behind 3208 Albany Post Road, which has been something I've been talking about for uh, probably since about 2018. So I, and I know I, I had suggested several times to have the uh, billing department write violations against Con Edison for the illegal uh, uh, construction and parking of vehicles on their property. And I was wondering if, if anybody, if Marcus or the mayor had spoken to uh, the building department about that and where that, uh, where that is. I don't uh, remember that conversation. What was the address once again, Sean? 3208, it's in back of the property adjacent to uh, the auto body shop. Okay. Now I had a, took out the entire hill, bulldozed it, has have cars and vehicles parked there and. It's been going on for several years now. And whenever Con Ed's been notified, they've, they've tried to do something, but I believe they have to safeguard their property from yeah. illegal occupation and their, the property should be returned back to its mm -hmm. original configuration or they should be taxed accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, also one other thing. Well, it, has, it, has that had any movement at all, uh, Mayor or Marcus, do you know? On the one that you just discussed? That's correct, yes. No, because I, I don't remember having that conversation. I don't remember you saying that, to be quite honest with you. And that's why I wrote that down, so that I will look into that. Sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing, uh, the municipal officials, have they started meeting yet? They, well, the first meeting is going to be next... September 9th. Thursday. Yeah, September 9th. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah, this this will be the first meeting. So it'll be this Thursday. I was thinking next Thursday. So is it an in-person meeting or is it a virtual meeting? Yeah, this is gonna be the first in-person meeting since the um, since the uh, the virus, since the COVID. I was wondering why none of the other, uh, no uh, elected officials received invitations to that. Uh, you know what? I haven't seen the invitation myself and usually the invitation gets forward to the board and then it goes on. Um, I am on the, I am the uh, secretary this year and I don't remember getting that invitation, but if you would like to go, you are more than welcome to. Um, anybody that would like to, go, let me, let me get that from them and send it, forward it to you and all the board members. So if anybody would like to go, they can go and I will uh, set up the appointment. I will make the arrangements for them. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Mayor. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Function, what do you have for us this evening? Oh, my uh, police report to begin with. Uh, as everybody knows, they were always because of this uh, timing of our meetings. There, this is uh, their reports from July. July 13th, Sergeant Palmietto investigated a possible arrest warrant that was coming out of the village of Buchanan. He confirmed the warrant, arrested the individual, and he was arraigned in the village court. On uh, July 19th, Officer Buddy responded to a trespasser on a property. The subject was identified by Officer Buddy, who advised the individual not to return to the property. The owner was satisfied with the situation. Uh, to note, you know, it's, this is what our police force does, and it's really good that they, you know, you could pick up a phone, and in, in most locations, you couldn't, you couldn't get this kind of type of service. So uh, I think it makes the citizens here very feel very safe. And then on July 28th, Officer John Tierney, uh, a, re a resident, reported an unknown on their porch. Officer Tierney identified the subject as a missing person from another jurisdiction. He assisted the return of the individual to that district jurisdiction with the appreciation of assistance coming from that. Um, main thing I want to remember, uh, Saturday, 1 o'clock, down to Croton at the memorial for 9-11. Uh, this will be 20 years, and uh, we've got to keep that in mind. Uh, I hope everybody can come. It's going to be, uh, weather-wise, it should be a, a very nice day. But uh, let's remember all of those who uh, died and those who partially died let's put it that way yeah. and that's all i got mayor all right thanks rich and then also um congratulations once again you are a 9 11 survivor and you will be the speaker at this uh this year's event thank you um trustee zachary what do you have for us uh yeah thank you um yeah, I'll follow up on that. Anybody that has, especially uh, if you have never seen the memorial, it's it's a really lovely lovely memorial to the 9-11 uh, um, catastrophe. <laughs> um, and it's um, out along the Riverwalk in Croton. You park and then you have about a 10 minute walk. Uh, there is a picture of it on the village uh, website, first page where there's some scrolling pictures. You see a picture of it and it's a beautiful spot. It's a beautiful memorial. Um, if you can get there this Saturday for the ceremony at one, I regret that I cannot even um, because of a family function, but, um, uh, but I've been to the memorial many times. So if you can get there Saturday, do so at one o'clock. If you can't get there when you can and see this the wonderful memorial. Um, I, um, don't have uh, much else to report right now. I um, just uh, wanted to follow up a um, couple of things that got mentioned already, but one other thing, uh, where are we at with the um, um, hiring a planner and rezoning of the Indian Point parcel? Or do we have anything scheduled in our workshop? I mean, I think we need to keep that moving. Uh, where are we at with that? Well, you know, I had mentioned that we were going to have a special meeting this month, but I'd like to um, put that on for our workshop um, September 28th to further discuss that. And I'm kind of hoping we can get some people. Um, we'll put it out on Facebook. We'll send it out on email. We'll advertise. Um, and also, please let our planning and zoning boards know. Um, I'd like to get some feedback from them. Uh, I, I think, honestly, I think it's important that we move forward with the rezoning. But you know, I'm one person. That's you know my thoughts. But I'd like to discuss that further at the workshop. And, and then if we have okay. to have a special meeting in October. We'll we'll do that before the newsletter goes out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, one last thing, I just, you know, I, I've been mentioning this for the last few meetings, but I think um, just need to once again, encourage people to get that vaccine. If uh, more people had done so when the vaccine became available, we wouldn't be having this uptick right now. 99% of the people getting sick are people that never got vaccinated. 
no individual raindrop ever considers themselves responsible for the flood. It takes a lot of raindrops to make a flood. Don't be one of the raindrops. <laughs> if you're not part of the solution, if you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. Get if you don't have a health reason not to, get over it. Get out there and get the vaccine. That's it. Okay. And I, I would also say I, I have a little issue with calling medical workers the first line of defense. They're the second line. The first line is every individual and their actions. You are the first line of defense, your decisions. It's, it's when that line of defense fails that the medical people have to kick in and they're certainly overtaxed, but, but they're not the first line, you are. Mm -hmm. And that's all I got. All right, thank you, Nick. Um, Trustee Capicotti, what do you have for us this evening? Oh, what do I have? Uh, where do I start? Where do I start? Well, I'm gonna keep this brief because it's getting late. Mm. I just wanna excuse myself for being, uh, not, not being present at the last meeting. I was under the weather. You know, I, uh, I hope to do better for the community moving forward. Um, uh, I just, I, I bring light to 9-11. I mean, it's a, it's a 20 years. It's, it's significant to a lot of people, a lot of good, uh, a lot of people, everybody remembers where you were on that day. So it's just, uh, just keep, keep it, keep it close to your heart and, and, you know, honor those that have given and given all they have given. And, uh, and, and those that have served and continue to serve and our firefighters, our police, our EMS, everybody who's uh, our first responders, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, uh, I, I'm feeling better now and I'm, I'm glad to be alive and, and living in the village of Buchanan. There you go. This is a wonderful village and, and I hope that the community, and like you said, we start to work together, Mayor, and, and, and move forward mm -hmm. and, and make this village a, uh, uh, to make it better than it is now. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's possible, but I just want to keep going in this direction. The one thing I want to bring up is in, in, in a newsletter recently, the, the latest newsletter for September, this is something I've been meaning mean to talk about. The December 1st parking, overnight parking. I believe that we need to restructure that. I'd like to work on that. Maybe we can come up with an idea of, uh, I mean, I've had a, a lot of people complain, you know, when I was campaigning about, you know, parking overnight. And I like to try and get ahead of this before we get into the winter weather. Uh, you know, I had an idea that was maybe we, like the town of Cortland has robocalls for their, for their storm preparations and, and, and anything coming that would be dra disaster related. You know, maybe the village can come up with a, a robocall uh, to set up a time frame for people to take their cars off the street. I mean, our storms not only happen, you know, they happen during the day as much as they happen overnight. I mean, so it's like we're, we're I've been in a situation myself where my, my kids have put the cars on the streets. I've gotten tickets, no big deal. I'll pay the tickets, but you know, it could affect somebody financially down the road in other situations. And, and I think we should work with the community a little bit in that regard. I think we could have a robocall come out with a time frame. This is when your car needs to be off the street, and this is when you could put it back on the street, regardless whether it's day or night. Mm -hmm. Helps the DOT, helps us clean the roads during the day as well as it does during the night. So, uh, I mean, something to look into. I don't know how we can get that done, but I'd like to move forward. Maybe Marcus can help me out with that a little bit. Looking mm -hmm. into uh, some kind of robocall, letting the people know what to do. Sure. You know, we do I, have code red, so we do have access to code red. So no, I know Marcus did explain that to me to code red, and and I I like to dive into that a little deeper and maybe do this call that would you know for anything like the town does when they call you there's a storm coming or this is coming you know just be a little bit more communicable with the communicable with the uh, people. I usually do do that, Anthony, but I. Uh, I've had complaints because, uh, and I've asked the town please not to put the robo call to here because then they get a call from the village and then they start getting angry. How many calls do we need to get? Yeah. So the, the last, this last storm they had, uh, the town had two robo calls and I felt that that covered it, but other storms before we've, we've used it or other emergency situations we've used it too. 
Yeah, no, I just, I, 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 I appreciate the town's, you know, calls, but I think it's significant for us to, you know, be the village, be our, be our own, our, our, you know, if, if we can get this, just with the parking alone, I think it's a big help to the community. I think it, a lot of people, especially people that are new to the community, they don't really know the law. They don't know how effective we are with it. And, it, and, and I think it, it helps the, the street cleaning as much as it helps with, with uh, everything else. Okay. So, I mean, just something to work on. Uh, other than that, I, you know, I ain't got nothing else to say. Okay. Just, uh, you know, enjoy your, your, your uh, weekend. And uh, thanks for, uh, thanks. Thanks for making me a board member. I'm hoping, I hope I make you proud. Yep. Yep. The That's community it. wanted you here to speak for them. So um, also, you know, Anthony, we could, I, we're going to have a big agenda for the workshop. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll, we'll ask the uh, police chief's opinion and also Bob Wheeler's opinion on the parking, the winter parking. Yeah, I mean, they can be subject to tow if, if, if we, they don't move. I mean, it's, it just helps, it just benefits the village even more, the process, than, than anything else. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. I mean, it keeps the roads clean during the day and at night. I mean, you know, Lindsay Avenue, when we have a storm during the day, you, saw, you see what Lindsay Avenue looks like. Yeah. I mean, we want to get these roads cleaned. I'm just trying to get it, get ahead of it before the winter months come. That's all. Yeah, no, now's a good time to talk about it. Okay, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to remind everybody to come out and support the support the beautification uh, committee. They're having their plant sale on Saturday, September 18th. Rain day will be the 19th. They do a lot of good things for the village. They do all the pretty flowers and and everything out at the circle and the boxes. So. Uh, we all support them. Um, and so is that the circle, right? Yes, it's at the circle. Yep. What do you know that does it what time? Uh, from nine to one. Nine to one. Thanks. I've uh, had several calls about uh, mail issues. Um, when I went to speak today to the um, postmaster, he was not in. So I will catch up with him tomorrow and get back to everybody with what the problem was. Um, we didn't have mail deliveries in a large part of the village Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. So not good. It's the first of the month people are looking for things in the mail. So um, so we discussed that we'll, we'll discuss more about Indian Point at the workshop. Um, the work will begin it worked out well out of the circle. We had a pre-construction meeting for the circle renovations. Um, so that work will be starting on September 20th. And that money is a grant from Entergy. Also in October, I'd like to do a community event thing um, where we plant daffodils up on top of the hill uh, where the new tree is in that area. So uh, we'll be talking about that more. Um, just September 25th is Buchanan Community Day. Um, that will be from four to eight. We will have um, entertainment. We're gonna have six string country. We're gonna have someone coming at six o'clock to teach line dancing. Um, the fire department will be there cooking hamburgers and hot dogs and the police department will be giving out ice cream. And for the kids, they'll be pumpkin painting. So um, we, we, we're doing something a little different this year um, with the COVID. Um, it probably wasn't a good idea to have bouncy castles this year. So we just want to make sure everybody stays. stays the hours for that again, Teresa? That is going to be four to eight on September 25th. Um, also with the storm Ida, we, we were fortunate. We did not get what Lower Westchester and the city and other areas uh, got. They got slammed and a lot of flooding. But I'm not going to say too much because we do have another uh, soaker coming through uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night into Thursday. So, but uh, hopefully we uh, keep uh, missing these bullets. So we've been pretty lucky. And that's all I have for this evening. And now we have, we have only a few people left. Um, comments from the floor. Would anyone like to make a comment? We'll wait a second. No? We answered everyone's questions? <laughs> okay. 
All right, so no, com I see no hands raised, no comments from the floor. Uh, we do not have an executive session this evening. Uh, we've covered everything unless anyone has anything they need to bring up. Otherwise, uh, on a motion to close the meeting. Make a motion. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks everyone for coming. Good night. Thank Thanks. you. Good night.